just kidding. Oh, I lost my screen. Okay, 8.32, and we will call the um, Public Health and Community Services meeting to order. Roll call, please. Bob Bergen. Here. Jensen. Schwartz. Present. Hendrick. Here. Schofield. Here. Meshes. Here. Bates. Parrish. Here. All right, um, so we have a quorum, we can proceed. Uh, minutes for approval. We have Public Health and Community Services public meeting June 30th. Um, minutes, uh, can I get a motion for approval? Ms. Meshes, um, motions, and Ms. Ginger seconds. Thank you, any discussions, changes, corrections, anything? Sure. Looks like a no. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes for June 30th, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. All right. Uh, public comment. No public comment. No public comment. All right. Then we'll move on to <coughs> member comments. Any members have comments? Ms. Meshes. Uh, given the amount of emails I've had over this, I feel like I should acknowledge that the uh, Board of Educational Office of Education's board has been filled. Um, and members of the community have wanted to discuss the transparency of that. I know that's not necessarily our purview, but since this, the, the office does report to our committee, that we should at least mention it in our committee that the, the, the board has been filled. Okay. Thank you for that. I believe that is uh, controlled by the bylaws, and uh, those are appointments, and uh, there, yeah. that's how it's handled. So it's, it's not any violation of any procedure from what I understand. Sure. Good morning. Come on in. We just got started. Any other member comments? I do maybe have a clarification. Did, um, one of the, um, actually a couple of the people, if they're in elected official roles, are they allowed to be um, uh, uh, appointed to boards? So that was like one question that someone had asked me. It's like, if you were an elected okay. official, you couldn't fill both roles, but I don't know the rules around that. And then in, okay. in regards to some of the interviews today, some of them are elected officials, so I just wanted to clarify. Okay, if you want, because I've sure. encountered, it, as long as it's, um, they're compatible offices, or they're not incompatible offices, you can fill it as long as it's compatible. You can't be compensated for both. Typically, you can't like have. Right. Okay, so you can't be co you can't be compensated for both. And when you say compatible, they can. They the state's attorney would rule on that. So. Yeah, I've got yeah. a giant chart of compatibility. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Any other um, Please so um, add. Let you know. There she is, Miss Bates and Dr. Jensen to the role. Uh, any member comment, Miss Bates or Dr. Jensen? I just I sent out uh, the Mel Health Board report. If there are any questions regarding some of the votes, please see me. I'm happy to explain them. We have a time looking at it. Happy to talk about it at a later date. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I wanted to um, just acknowledge uh, between September 1st um, that it, uh, September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And so you may or may not know that there is a new um, 988 number that is similar to 911. It's 988 for uh, mental health and um, crisis intervention. And so if you or someone you know is struggling or in crisis, uh, help is available. You can call or text 988. And um, as this committee knows, um, we have a lot of resources in the county. The Mental Health Board is is strong and um, funding a variety of agencies in order to, uh, to continue to provide services to our community. And the um, Board of Health, as I mentioned uh, at our meeting last month, that they presented their iPlan, and we're not seeing that today because of the large, um, large agenda, but we will see it in the future. Um, one of the top three concerns was mental health issues. And so I think that, uh, again, it being September 1st and September being Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, I thought I would just acknowledge and um, I encourage you to um, re familiarize yourself with the Mental Health Board uh, and their website and all of the uh, agencies that are available in this county to help our um, citizens. So. May I piggyback on that? We're seeing an increased numbers of suicides too. Yes. 
Yes, and NAMI, NAMI has data about suicides, and one of the things, um, I forget which meeting I was at, but they spoke um, that they've seen an increase in adult male suicide by um, gun, gunshot wounds. So um, they are working to provide programming in regards to that. So, all right. Okay, so um, moving on, we have no reports on the agenda. So our new business is interviews for a variety of um, boards today. So we have Richard Adamson with us today. And so um, what we'd like you to do is just introduce yourself to the committee. Um, we have some new members um, since uh, perhaps the last time that you um, interviewed. And just tell us uh, about um, your interest in continuing. And, uh, and then we'll open it up to questions from the committee. Uh, good morning, I'm Dick Addison. I have lived in the county since 1986, until so I came to work for the Henry Savings. Um, I've been on, been working in community banking all my life. I was in the Henry Savings for a very long time. Um, recently, the uh, bank group where I have worked for almost 10 years purchased the um, State Bank Group, which has banks in Wonder Lake, Two in Harvard, Lake Moore, Spring Grove, uh, Two in Wonder Lake. I work in the one in Wonder Lake. I am the uh, lender of the main office of the bank. Uh, very happy to be there. Uh, recently made vice president. I'm also the secretary of the board there. Uh, other things since I joined here, I got on the board of uh, Consumer Credit Counseling of Northern Illinois, uh, and unfortunately not too long thereafter, I was made the treasurer. So, I uh, get a lot of emails these days. But uh, I've enjoyed being on the commission. Uh, attended more Zoom meetings than I ever knew existed. Like this all. Uh, the, uh, I'd like to say that being on it, I've learned so much of what I didn't know, and I've learned how much more there is to know. But I do like being on it. Uh, the one other thing that uh, comes up is, again, going back to all the emails that I tend to get, uh, I'm in a position now where I can disseminate some of that stuff, either through consumer credit or through here, and when I encounter something that I think makes sense for someone to know, I pass it along. That's me these days. Questions from the committee? Oh, that's funny. Um, thank you for your willingness to continue to serve on it. I'm curious if um, you have any personal goals or you see anything for the commission that needs to be addressed in the future or what's going good and um, where you see heading. wasn't prepared for a question like that. Oh. But I think that if anything more outreach would be useful, uh, I think the organizations that deal with the commission are familiar with them, although um, <coughs> recently was a situation with Consumer Credit Council. Um, and again, <clears throat> when they come up for the commission, I've abstained. Um, but there was a, um, application for a monetary award uh, for which they were declined uh, because they uh, had asked for less than what the minimum amount was. They didn't know that there was a minimum amount. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I would think that perhaps we should try to make people, organizations, more aware of all of the parameters that uh, might be required. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Um, and so in your time serving, what would you say has been, like, any struggles that there's been on the board? Any, um, anything that, uh, what was the hardest part of being on the board? Understanding some of the, of the arithmetic, honestly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've always worked around for-profit uh, situations. Um, <clears throat> this isn't. And, uh, I okay, had to you know, get a handle on that. And um, the limitations that exist, you know, for example, we, there have been times when we've had actually more money to dispense 
than, uh, than was requested. Other times, most times, not as much has been requested. And the way that's gotten broken, broken apart. It was interesting, there was a, uh, uh, a couple, two, maybe three years ago, I think maybe pre-pandemic, um, there was a request for some money from Wonder Lake to build a footbridge. And we, again, didn't have quite enough money for everybody. And um, so they wanted to like allocate percentages of what was available. And uh, we got down to the footbridge and Larry Smith, who's been, I suspect, on the commission a long time, observes, you can't build part of a bridge. <laughs> So it's, uh, <clears throat> I like seeing that real world and community familiarity uh, coming into play when uh, these decisions get made. Thank you for your service on the board. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Um, how, how, is there any, do you have any ideas how to improve the grant making process beyond um, letting people know more about the parameters of the application, uh, do you think that on our end we're um, we're doing the job as far as the application, making it accessible? I don't know. I haven't explored that. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with how with the, when awards are available, when applications are disseminated. Um, I've never seen the instructions, and I, if I saw those, maybe I'd make some, make some suggestions, maybe some edits. Um, but so I, and I would kind of leave that for the uh, for the staff and the professionals that work with it every day. If I had uh, the opportunity to look at something like that, I, I might have some thoughts. So I want to, you know, forgive me for my ignorance. So. so how does the process work? Those recommendations come from staff to your group, mm -hmm. but you do not have any idea of what those applications look like uh, no, we don't. In, the, in the structure or whatever. You're just um, making a decision on those recommendations, you know, we get a not what the format looks like. We get a summary of the application. And Larry, correct me if I got this wrong, mm -hmm. but we get a summary of the application. Um, we get the, the letter of interest? Pardon me? Do you receive the letter of interest? No. I don't think so. Uh, but we, uh, there are questions, there are responses. That's what we get to see. I don't think we're shown um, what's given to the potential applicants. So you're more like a rubber stamp? Often. Often. Okay. Thanks. But not entirely. I mean, uh, now that I think of it, things do get declined. Not very often. So I think staff does a pretty, pretty good job of uh, guessing, on, uh, guessing on what they say. I don't know what, uh, what doesn't get past them. Thank you. So this would be your second three-year term? Yes. Okay, thank you. All righty. Thank you very much. We've got some other interviews this morning, so we'll um, get thank back you. to you to let you know um, what occurs after de deliberation. Okay. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for getting me out of the lobby today. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Susan. She's out there for you. Yeah. Hi, Sue. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for being here this morning. You're welcome. We know each other. Um, uh, I'd like you to introduce yourself to uh, the committee and then tell us a little bit about your continued interest to okay. be on CDHG. Hi, um, I'm Sue Draftmore and I live in Wonder Lake and um, I, I've been involved in a lot of volunteering. I was on the county board for many years. Uh, I'm in Kiwanis and McHenry. I'm um, the clerk for the village of Wonder Lake Planning and Zoning 
to me. And so I just like to um, think, give back to my community, volunteer. Uh, I've been involved in this community, this commission, actually, quite a long time. I was involved as a county board member. I was the chairwoman of this committee. And it was really one of the committees that I thought really gave back to the community more than anything. You know, we could see, we, we did a, a project down in, uh, down in Union where we had a, a, put a water system in for these people that couldn't have water. They weren't, they didn't have the money to put in a water system. And so the federal funds we rolled into that project. So I would like to continue to see our community benefit from those federal funds. All right, we'll have um, some questions from the committee. Yeah. First, thank you. Good to see you again. And you. thank you for your continue, um, continued involvement. I mean, it's great to have that historical knowledge. And um, So I'm just curious if you have any recommendations or insight or thoughts on moving forward, what you'd like to, con just continuation, or if there's anything in particular you'd like to accomplish, or um, learned experiences? Well, I. I, I think it's it's good that we spread the money out throughout the county and not just keep going back to the same um, municipalities because we do see that a lot, it, you know. And I think Lori, on her short time on, has seen that also that we do see a lot of the same repeat uh, recipients. And so I think it's good to have new recipients in there and look at what they do. And so I think that's what I've done on the committee is say, you know, they haven't been here before. Let's let's try to help them out and see, you know how much we can do that. So I'd like to see, open it up to more uh, the municipalities and, and different services that are out there. And a follow up on that, do you have any, because that was kind of mentioned in the last interview too, do you have any specific um, suggestions or thoughts on that outreach? Well, I, I know they put the um, publications, you know, public notices. Um, I don't know if there's any other notification to these municipalities. Do you know, Lori, if there's anything else besides the public? I don't know. No, we have to ask staff. I'm yeah, sure their I, efforts I are, are but we can follow up with Hans later. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, but you don't contact any of the municipal or local like the um, like service or anything like that. We do through constant. Oh, you do. Okay. So, um, so I think as members on the commission, we can also, you know, let our let where we live in that area know. And I think I've done that. Is you know contacted different uh, municipalities and say, you know, there's money out here, you know, go on the website and s see if you qualify. And I've helped people actually try to um, navigate the, the form and that kind of thing. So I, I, I think just my, um, my knowledge of the people in the area helps, you know, get the money to where they can go. Great, thanks. Anyone else want to ask well, questions? What I just wanted to make a comment. I worked, I worked with Sue when she was on the county board, and I delighted to see that you have so much in serving. So thank you. You're welcome. I have no questions. Okay. Thank you. I know her. And okay. I respect her. Any other questions from the committee? Yes, I just wanted to say, Sue, it's so good to see you. <laughs> I'm going to second to what Carolyn said. It's Thank so you. wonderful seeing you involved. And uh, uh, another thing that's wonderful about Sue is she's very, very networked. And when she says she knows people in the area, she knows people in the area. So she can be extremely helpful. Any other questions? All right, Sue, thank you so okay. much. All Thanks right. for being here. Okay. We, um, we have some other interviews, and so we'll deliberate and okay. make some decisions, and then uh, we'll be in touch. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks right. for your service. <laughs> introduce yourself to the committee and tell us a little bit about yourself and your involvement in CDHG so far because you are um, returning sure. uh, yes. and okay. uh, um, applying to renew sure. your term so, and then we'll have some questions for you. Okay, so uh, my name is Rob Grammer. Um, I am uh, cur currently employed as a commercial lender uh, 
Advia Credit Union. Uh, my, my career has all been here in McHenry County at different banks and financial institutions, uh, primarily dealing with commercial uh, real estate. And as you know, our banks uh, keep getting bought out, so the names keep changing and uh, I keep floating around uh, with different institutions as they are getting bought out. Um, I've lived in McHenry um, itself for the last 36 years. Um, I've raised my uh, children there. I still live there in McHenry. I've been involved in a lot of community um, activities over the years, uh, starting with the uh, Richmond Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Canary Chamber of Commerce, uh, the EDC, I was on their board for a while. And uh, for the last six years, I've been working with the Community Development Housing Grant Commission and have found that uh, very interesting, a good fit for my experience and my background. Um, I think I've been able to uh, contribute a lot to that commission. Married, three kids, all grown, all out of the area. Uh, my wife and I have decided to stay in the area, unlike a lot of our, our peers. So we're, we're staying in the area and uh, making this our home base and uh, going to visit our kids <laughs> because they're scattered all over the place. So uh, don't want to follow my kids around. Uh, that's about it you know, for my um, you know, banking experience, um, the work experience. Uh, like McHenry, I did not grow up in this area. I moved here in 84 and uh, immediately felt very comfortable um, in this area, in, Mc in McHenry, and it's been uh, a good place to uh, raise my children and contribute to the community. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? First, thank you for your continued willingness to serve. We appreciate that. Um, is there anything specific that you want to accomplish moving forward or any successes that you've had in the past that stand out to you? Um, in what area? Oh, I'm the commissioner, I'm sorry. Oh, the commissioner, yeah. okay, sure. Um, the, the affordable housing um, segment of what the commission does um, uh, strikes a, a nerve with me. I found I've become more interested in that aspect of it, um, and that's probably, uh, as I'm looking towards uh, you know, doing more volunteer work, I would be more involved in that, in that area. So, um, you know, those projects that that really uh, focus on affordable housing here in McHenry County are very important to me. And, and where do you, what's your opinion on um, where we're at? How are we looking so far? How are we doing so far? <laughs> there's, not, there's not enough. I don't know how, how uh, younger, younger people or people you know, with lower incomes can't afford to live here in McHenry County. It's, mm -hmm. it's very challenging. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Um, what, how does the uh, grant commission process work as a, as, as you as a member? So, like, I think we're getting different answers from everyone. Like, are you part of the grant process, or does it, the applications just come to you, and then you get to kind of decide, you know, disseminate that? So the um, planning and development department, right, who oversees this commission, uh, the applications come to them. Uh, they basically gather all the information, make their recommendations, uh, give us all the pertinent information, and then supply the commission members um, with the results of their findings. First of all, they make sure that the, the grant proposals meet the, uh, the requirements. Okay. Um, so that's the, the screening process. And then, of course, you know, we're sitting there with a, you know, a request of $3 million and only a million dollars to disperse. So side which is gets the best bang for the buck impacts the most people uh, here in the county. Okay, thank you. Sure. Teresa? What have you found to be the most difficult part of working on this commission? The most difficult? Yeah. Um, I think I just mentioned it, that there's so many needs out there yeah. and uh, not enough money to go around. Um, I did have some philosophical issues this last couple of years with all the money that the government was searching for that the, uh, not the county, but the federal government was just throwing out there willy-nilly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had some issues you know, with that. But for the most part, the requests that come in are, are very legitimate. And it's, they're all, they're all good requests, you know, and you, you have to decide um, which one you can do. The most you can do. Where do you put your personal priorities at? You just said affordable housing, but do you find that you have to turn down 
any, like how would you decide between two different affordable housing programs? Or you don't have to because there's not that many coming to you. Um, what we decide on that, mm -hmm. or you know, what I do is, is which, which um, impacts the most number of people. How many, how many residents are being served by that, that program? Is it just a, um, we also look at you know, different organizations, uh, where their funding is coming from. Are they funded solely through grants and, and contributions, or they have some type of self-funding mechanism uh, that goes into the decisions. Thank you so much. Sure. It's good yeah, to see you. And we've got some. Oh, Kay, did you have a question? I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Oh, it's good to see you. <laughs> uh, I, all of you, you don't know, he was chairman of my board quite some time ago. Yes. <laughs> a kid, it's wonderful work for us and his wife. And uh, uh, he's, a, he's a good leader out there in the community, mm -hmm. I will say. That. So, <laughs> And Rob, it's, it's been a pleasure working with you uh, on the committee so far. Thanks for um, your continued service and interest in being in the commission. Thanks, Thanks. so much. Thank you. Yeah. Of course, you can send that, Kay. He I am. You as a I'm very <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, um, by default, this, yeah, the chair. When they can right. To that. right. Yeah. So the chair of this right. is the chair of that. Yeah. And then he's the vice chair uh, as a uh, PD. I think he's chair of PD. He's, yeah. he's chair of PD. So yeah. when they combined the board, yeah. they did that. Yeah. That was the compromise. They were separate boards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here, and one was under here, and one was under PD, and then they combined. So. All righty. Mr. Vol, thank you for being here. So I'm Lori Parrish. I'm the chair of the Public Health and Community Services um, Committee. And uh, so what we're doing this morning is interviewing for some seats uh, for CVHG. And so we have your application that you completed for um, mm -hmm. the county. If you could share with the committee a little bit about who you are and your interest for uh, interviewing today, and uh, and then we'll have some questions from the committee members. Okay. Well, I um, recently became a new real estate agent a year ago. Uh, so I've, I've, my wife has been doing it for 20 years. So there's always been an interest in the family for real estate and, and helping. Uh, two years ago, I did have a massive heart attack, and my attitude on life has changed since then. Uh, I decided to just stop always working to try and make money, and I'm starting to help other people more. Uh, I actually like working with first-time home buyers because the look on their face when they get their first home just is almost worth more than the pay. Uh, of course, don't make as much <laughs> because they tend to buy smaller houses. Um, and uh, you know, I'm doing other charity things. The next month, I'm running 5K as part of my getting my life back for to benefit uh, the Healthy Paws Animal Shelter in Woodstock here. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I think it must have been my calling. I just to start helping people again. Thank you. Take some questions. Okay. <laughs> righty. Thank you so much. Anyone? I have a question. Okay. You also serve on the Regional Planning Commission. Is that correct? Thank no. Right. That's on me. That's right. The next one. Right? Oh, the next one. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm confused, which is normal. Um, my question is that, um, have you attended any of the meetings? Have you? Of the meetings for this committee? Yeah. No, I have not. This is a recent desire on my part with the real estate to, to okay. start doing it. I probably will start attending meetings, whether okay. I'm a member of the committee or not. So I guess then the follow-up would be, what would you see as the challenges of that? Of the committee? Yeah. Well, um, I had a couple of clients that have needed to get grants uh, to be able to buy their first house. And that, the, the mortgage company arranged those. But uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, want to help do things for individual people, community as a whole. Um, this is one area that 
seemed of interest to help with the, you know, this type of stuff. So, did you go online uh, and look at the website for the committee and the bylaws and everything are printed? Yeah. Up? Yes, I have a copy of them with me actually. How did you hear about the CDHD? Um, I actually was looking for something which I don't remember what it was, and it and it had in there an ad for an opening for one of the other departments, and I think it was actually in the Forest Preserve or something like that, and so I went into through that and got linked into others, and then um, once I applied, I got a phone call and said, you know. What department do you actually want? So I discussed it with, with her, and she I chose this one after we discussed a few things. Okay. So it was kind of a roundabout way. <laughs> Sometimes those are the best way things happen, right? Yeah. No. Any other questions? I just sure. want to make a comment. I just want to say, you know, first of all, I'm glad your health is. Yes. You know, hopefully you're all better now, and that, um, and I think that you know, your passion to serve is similar to. A, several people that have gone through the same um, type of awakening, I guess you could say. So I appreciate that. And um, regardless of the outcome, you know, I hope you continue to give back to your community because it's greatly appreciated. Oh, yeah. Well, when I told people I applied for this, one of the first things they asked is how much you get paid. I said, well, absolutely nothing. And yeah. I said, why are you doing it? And I mm -hmm. said, because I just feel like I need to do it. You get paid in a different way. Yes. So I appreciate that. I didn't know until I met the people out there I was going against three incumbents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there are lots of needs here at the county, yeah. so. Yes. yes. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Thank you for uh, coming forward and volunteering for this. And uh, whether you're appointed or not to this commission, there's a lot of other mm -hmm. uh, areas uh, within the county that you could uh, participate in, things like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, with, you know, lots of the comments in your application regarding um, the conservation of land and resources is, you know, um, possibly getting involved in, if you're not already in, like, the McHenry County Conservation District. And, oh, there's just lots of different opportunities. Yeah, I used to do that a lot when I was uh, younger. I started with Boy Scouts, uh, doing a lot of conservation work. Um, Projects and actually did a lot for. I grew up in Villa Park and I did a lot for the Villa Police Department too. Uh, and uh, kind of got away with it once I started having family and needing to provide for them, I guess. And uh, you know, I always, every once in a while I do something, but uh, you know, I just want to get back into it a lot heavier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks okay. for being here and your interest in, in volunteering. We really appreciate it. Okay. And we'll have de deliberations in a little while, and we'll get in touch with you. Someone from the county will get in touch with you. Okay. Thank, Same. You. thank you so much. Thank Good luck you. in your 5K. That's oh, um, yes. very impressive. <laughs> okay. well, I'm taking sponsors if anybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then. So those are the four for CDHD, and then we have one interview for the Housing Authority. Is Mr. Zaleski here? It looks like Scott went out to see him. Oh, we're actually ahead of time. We so. are ahead of time, yeah. Wow. <laughs> he not here yet. Not we're, here. we're early. Okay. So how about then we, um, why don't we go ahead and move to, uh, let me just make sure I get the right one, 6.6. .6 deliberation so we had four interviews and we have um, deliberation can I get a motion for deliberation and selection for the CDHG Commission um, selecting up to three candidates um, for to recommend to the chairman um, with terms beginning oh, um, December 16th 2021 and expiring on December 15th of 2024 so um, a motion to, deli to deliberate Sure, okay, and I'll second. second. All right, so that was uh, Teresa and Jeff seconding. All righty, and so deliberation and selection. So this was supposed to be a, a year ago. Yep. Okay. 
But we had like the three of them were already on the board. So mm -hmm. they're placing themselves. Yeah, I would. They probably just well, continue to serve until they're yeah. until. Oh, okay. Oh, until a new new yeah, appointed. appointed mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want them all um, together? Or do you want them individually? Um. Well, is uh, we need to appoint three. So, is there? Um, would anyone like to recommend? Um, I want three. Or do we, do we need? I would recommend three. You want to recommend three? Yeah. I'd recommend three. Okay. Three. Three. I got. I got my list too. Okay. <laughs> um, Mr. Edmondson, Miss mm -hmm. Drakhorn, and Mr. Grammer. I will second that. Okay. And then I want just oh, if I can. Go ahead. Sure. Um, I and I you know they've all done. A, a great job and have passion to continue to serve so I don't want to hamper that from the standpoint of um, you know I don't want to discourage um, Ball, Mr. Ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. He would be a great candidate for this as well. I mean his mm -hmm. background um, and his willingness to serve you know it's, it's too bad there's not a position for him because it would be great to bring somebody new into the photo as well but I don't even know who it would be that wouldn't you know I, I feel like the other three are very strong as well so I would hate to swap one, you know, and, and have to, uh, so if there's an opening, right. I would right. encourage right. us right. to reach back out to him um, mm -hmm. if there was an opening that did occur, so. Um, there's another opening coming in December. Oh. There we go. That's good for us to know. Excellent. Okay, thank you, and that's what I was just wondering, since this one, or the, the dates here are a year ago, so um, that's good to know. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, and maybe just a point of uh, clarification. If we, when that role is available, does it have to, do we have to go through the process again or can we, okay, so we can't do like ahead of schedule that we're, the appointment has kind of come up and we're going to appoint today, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, because right. it's got to open it up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think what we can do, and I'm happy to, um, you know, reach out to him and, yeah. and let him know okay. that um, it's coming quickly. We would encourage him to reapply. I imagine we'll just open it up and, and reapply. Yeah. So and I, I'd actually, I'm sorry, and I I'd actually know. like to see his application. I feel like maybe he applied for the conservation district. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. There was when he did send in his application. I was a little confused as to which one he was applying for, and I did reach out to him, mm -hmm. and he had indicated. Mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. So maybe reapplying and with both. the qualifications mm -hmm. that would be more fitting for this position would be great. Right. Right, I wanted to echo your comment that, that it would be nice to have new people on the board, but right, I also can't say, oh, I, which of the three uh, current members would I yeah. not give, uh, give them, they want this opportunity, let them keep that opportunity. So um, because of that, I also support the motion. And just for clarification, yes. grammar is not a current member. Oh. The terms that are due are oh. Richard Addison and Sue Drafthorn. And then the third one was for C Cecilia Bravo Whitman Hoda. But Cecilia, I mean, but Robert's on the board. He's been mm -hmm. attending the meeting. So when did his um, term expire? Because he's a he's a mem I mean, I've been working with him as chair. I do not show him on the board. I'm sorry. <laughs> <did that. laughs> if you're not on the board, of course. She says he's he not on the board. He said. He, yeah, he says he's, he's done it for six years. Yeah, he's been attending. Yes, yeah, I, was, I was pretty <laughs> confused with <laughs> that too. I caught on. You know. And he did say he was on it for six years too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. And how I read it, according to the notes I received, yeah, you know. the three up, the three that are up, his, his name is not. <laughs> well, regardless. Okay. Well, yes, argue. regardless. Yes. Um, Okay. He's doing a good job for he a that he's not on. I've enjoyed working with him the last uh, year that I've yeah. been, um, or two. That's really interesting. Yeah, it is. So uh, that's a mystery we'll solve a little bit later I guess. Yes. Um, with We're the community good. development um, yeah, we've department. Seen that All right, so we have, I'm um, hearing the recommendation to appoint Adamson, Drafthorn, and Grammar um, for the three current openings from 2021 to 2024. Um, I had a different opinion. So okay. I was interested in putting Mr. Grammer, Mr. Bull, and Ms. Drakhorn forward. 
Um, if Grammar is not, he would not, is not currently on the board, then he would not be an incumbent. Um, and then I, too, believe that, you know, having new people, new faces, especially people who have interest in, you know, beginning, um, it, it, becoming more interested in um, the community and giving back, in, in my opinion, I mean, sometimes that's more valuable than somebody who's been on the board for longer. It's the desire, and he, he clearly has some personal reasons why this is very important to him. Um, so that that's my personal opinion is I, I would um, choose the, uh, the three that I've mentioned. So how do we go about, do we vote on the first mo mo motion or she, and then go back? Well, I mean, I think, as I understand, you know, the motion is to deliberate and select, and so there was a suggestion for the three, the three and then there's a suggestion for another three, so I'm wondering perhaps with what, what Carolyn suggested is we do, do we vote um, each for each uh, individual? Do you can do it that way, or you can do it that way too. Yeah. I'm yes. not hearing all of what, what you're oh, saying, oh, but I was okay. wondering, with, uh, are, is it said that Rob Grammer is not part of the community development block, block grant? I think it's well, maybe just okay. a okay. Yeah, that, that, help me with this, Peter. Is it, well, did we elect him to uh, one of our commissions? He's, it looked like it wasn't that long ago, yeah, like maybe in the last he, year or two. That he, that's yeah. exactly the case. So I think. I think we've got to get a little bit of input here. What does sure. that matter? Sure. Yeah. Pardon? What does that matter? We can that doesn't board. really matter. It matters matter. if we have the different people on the board, Jeff. That's, yeah. that's the difference because yeah. Tanya you know, stated that she would like a different group of right. three people. So but we already made a motion for the other three and it was seconded. So I think procedurally, don't we have to vote on that? And then and if that doesn't pass, then, that's then, fine. You, okay. and then we go back for another then vote. Then you go back for okay. another vote. Right? Yeah. Sure. I mean, unless I'm wrong no, we here. Can do, I, yeah, we can do, um, I'm, we can I'm do not that. suggesting anything other than. Sure. Well, and that's, I mean, right. OK, so we had we had the motion for the first three um, and, a, and a second. Um, and then we discuss that. So, and then um, Tanya has provided some uh, additional information and perspective. And so we can go ahead and um, we can vote on uh, selecting three candidates, Adamson, Draftcorn, and Grammar. So let's do um, an individual uh, roll call. Please, Jenny. We're, we're going for all three, right? Unless now. she but wants to divide. I mean, what she could, could request to divide it up. Okay. <laughs> if you, you could, wanted to you request make a to request divide them to up, divide you could. Yeah, if you ask to vote singularly yeah. for the one three, one. is that correct? Yeah. So we can do vote one at a time. I, one at a time. I, I'm completely fine with that. I think I thought that what Jeff was saying was that since we had already seconded it, like we were supposed to vote it that way first. And right, but, I, but we vote singularly so that you may have an opportunity and sure. other may have an opportunity to vote now on a particular person then we can reintroduce another motion complete what whichever is better for the board completely fine with does that make sense chairperson yeah i don't have <laughs> well, she wants to, I, wait no the, procedurally, I'm confused, though. procedurally she could say mm -hmm. can we take them in separate motions well i would like to procedurally recommend that we take them <laughs> Take them singularly. Singular. Oh, yes. I like to make that motion that we we take them singularly. Thank you. I'll second that. So we're going to withdraw the first motion. We're going to withdraw the first motion of the three. Thank you. Is no, that what I'm saying? It's the same hearing? motion, it's just now taking them individually. We're now taking them as a group. Right. Okay, so we're going to start with Adelson. Is that what I'm It's the same motion. Yeah, okay. So it's. Mm. All right. So. That's the harder one. Right, isn't that it? Yeah. This time. Okay, so we're going to vote for selecting them individually. So, Kathy, do um, call roll for each candidate uh, separately, please. Okay. For Adamson, Von Bergen? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Schwartz? No. Jindrick? No. Schofield? Yes. Meshes? Yes. Bates? Yes. Parrish? No. For draft corn, 
Bates? Yes. Nashes? Yes. Schofield? Yes. Jindrick? Yes. Swartz? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Van Bergen? Yes. Parrish? Yes. Robert Grammer? Schofield? Yes. Jindrick? Yes. Meshes? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Bates? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Von Bergen? Yes. Parrish? Yes. For Bull? Von Bergen? Oh, that wasn't part of the motion. This is separate motion. Yeah. Do we already have three? Yeah. What was the count on Adamson? I'm sorry. Uh, Adamson were three nays, Schwartz, Jindrick, and Parrish versus yeah. five. So, that's so three. it passed. Yep. Passed. So you have three. So we have three. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And is, so we have uh, Adamson, Dracon, Grammar. Uh, um, making that recommendation to the chairman uh, for appointment. And then uh, Mr. Zelinsky, is he arrived? He is here. Okay, so we'll go back to uh, 6.5 for the interview for housing authority. I'm Lori Parrish. Hi. Hi, I'm the chair of the Public Health and Community Services Committee. We welcome you here. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully and you're all a little bit better than the last time I was here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so we'd love to, uh, we have your application that you submitted to the right. county. If you could um, share with us a little bit about yourself and you're interested in wanting to be on the Housing Authority, and then okay. we'll have some questions for you. My name is Randy Zaleski. I've been a... Uh, a uh, citizen of the McHenry County for about a year. Uh, we moved in uh, September of last year. I currently am a uh, business owner uh, in uh, a company that is involved in the construction industry. And uh, I sit on the uh, Regional Planning Commission for the county here currently. And why I want to get involved in this is because I think it's important that uh, housing is one of the biggest issues that we have in the county, affordable housing in itself. And uh, with the increase in uh, the senior citizens population and uh, the economy itself, affordable housing is becoming more and more critical. And I think it's a human right that affordable housing is available to people. Um, I have uh, sat on a variety of different uh, corporation boards. I currently am involved in an advisory capacity of my company that I sold about two years ago. And I sit on a board of directors of a company that's in uh, Washington, D.C., or Washington, state of Washington. Um, I've sat on a, a variety of different social boards, or social uh, situations, such as St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, I uh, volunteered for Hesed House uh, for mm -hmm. uh, people who are uh, without homes, homeless. And I uh, deliver meals on noodles. So that's a little bit about me. I'm married for about 53 years now. And uh, I'm a graduate of a uh, small school in South Dakota with a BA degree in uh, sociology and psychology. And I found out I couldn't make a lot of money in sociology and psychology. So uh, after the service, I went to the New York Institute of Finance, I graduated from the New York Institute of Finance, and became a stockbroker for a little while. and then. Decided to get in the construction industry. So, mm -hmm. who I am. Wonderful. So. Thank you so much, Randy. Appreciate sure. you being here. All right. Questions, Questions. from the committee? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, and thank you for your continued willingness to serve and um, for your service on the Regional Planning Commission. Hopefully everything's going well with that. Um, just curious on, on with this, what you're um, hoping to accomplish. You know, I know this is more of a long term. Obviously, the Regional Planning Commission is more short term and your background is really fitting for that and this as well. So um, with your background, bringing it into 
to this commission, is there any goals that you are hoping or um, any thoughts or just your willingness well, one of, to One of the things on the Regional Housing Committee uh, Commission, uh, housing, or not Regional Housing Commission, but the, the Regional Planning Commission, mm -hmm. housing is one of the areas of concern for us. And uh, part and parcel of being involved in that, uh, I thought it would be good to get on the Housing Authority and uh, oversee some of the uh, operations with relationship to the housing and uh, affordable housing. Um, you know, the, the Housing Authority is, uh, is uh, one of them uh, that watches over the funds that is given to these. But I think it's $14 million or something along those lines. So it's more on an order of a, an advisory capacity rather than a, or an overseeing advisory capacity rather than a uh, action committee. Uh, so um, where we use those funds, I think, are going to be critical uh, because of our increase of, of senior citizens that are going to be happening in our community or uh, in our county. Um, and also the influx of some of the people that are going to be coming into our county are going to need affordable housing. So I thought that would be a good area to be involved with in relationship to the planning mm -hmm. of the 2050 plan. Great, thank you. Any questions? I'm sorry, when did you say you moved here? About a year ago. Jump right but in. But I think, you know, I yeah. think it's really critical. <laughs> no, no, I thought it was really important. I was going to ask you why you chose our county. Well, I have, I have two kids that live in uh, Crystal Lake, okay? Okay. And, um, I think as we get older, we need to get closer to our kids so maybe they can take care of us or something. <laughs> <laughs> happens. Like walking with a cane, which about uh, two years ago, I had a spinal cord stroke. Or a year and a half ago, I had a spinal cord stroke. Uh, unbeknownst to me, I wake up one morning and I can't walk. So I think it's, uh, uh, it behooves everyone to, to plan for unexpected things, <laughs> and whether you can or can't. It's a good idea to think about it. And, and being involved, I think it's really important that people, whoever they are, get involved and give back to the community, uh, be it the, on a localized basis or on a county basis. I think it's very important to volunteer time and it's important to give back. Well, I think we're lucky to have you in our county, so thank you so much for your interest. Well, thanks. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not for your kids, but... Yeah, but for sure about my kids. <laughs> thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? I think it's, I know a lot of people <coughs> that serve on the Housing Authority Board. <coughs> They've been on the board for a long period of time. And I'm delighted that you're interested in serving because I think we need new blood, new ideas um, on, the, on the Housing Authority Board. Um, So thank you for your interest. Well, according to my doctor, I don't necessarily have as much blood as you might think. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you so much for being here and your time thank today. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate interest. all you guys uh, and all the effort you do. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right, so then um, moving on to 6.7. Um, deliberation and selection um, for the McHenry County Housing Authority. <coughs> I'll make a motion to, right. to um, select Randall Zaleski for this one open position. All right. I'll second. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Alrighty. Well, that was easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on, we've got two items on our routine consent agenda. Anyone wish to remove either of those items or discuss both of them? Yeah, I'd like to discuss seven point one. Okay, seven point one. Anybody want to individually discuss seven point two? All right. So uh, routine consent agenda. Um, how about uh, we'll just go with uh, 7.1? Can I get a motion um, 
for a resolution uh, authorizing emergency appropriation of $50,000 in award funding for the Medical Reserve Corps Respond, Innovate, Sustain, and Equip RISE grant to the Department of Health's um, FY22 budget. Motion? So moved. Tanya? Oh, okay. Um, Tanya and uh, Carolyn. All righty. Thank you, Melissa. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? And then it sounds like um, Jeff might have some questions or comments. <coughs> Pull it up in the. about um, you know further preparing our medical reserve corps they played a really significant role in the response to COVID but they it's not just about COVID right it is about maintaining the training of these volunteers who come from different backgrounds some of them are nurses some of them are you know physicians lay people this is just part of what we have to do to remain prepared uh, should there be other emergencies in the future. So we do training activities um, and uh, this will pay for some supplies for the department. So is this a grant that was, uh, is this uh, access and grant funding then? Here? Yes. that we tap. Okay. Um, they help us with lots of different things. Sometimes they help us with education. During the pandemic, you know, they uh, helped at the clinics, run the vaccination clinics. When we do exercises like Operation Dropbox, where we collect supplies that are supposed to sort of simulate in an emergency, how would we bring people together and um, efficiently either deliver medication or supplies. So they exercise those things and this grant supports that work. That grant. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any other questions, Melissa? No. no? Okay. Yeah. All right. Then um, can we have a roll call for a vote on the resolution? Please. Schwartz. Yes. Janssen? Yes. Ron Bergen? Yes. Gendrick? Yes. Schofield? Yes. Meshes? Yes. Bates? Yes. Parrish? Yes. All righty. Thank you very much. And then um, motion for resolution authorizing reclassification position number from 6N to 7N um, for the Department of Health uh, FY22 roster. So moved. All right. Dr. Janssen? Carolyn? Second. Second. All right. Any um, questions or discussion? Melissa, Melissa did you uh, want to? Sorry, I just yeah. want to make a comment. Sure, yes, I please. I apologize. Um, so we are doing this now. It actually originally we started having the conversation to put it through as a uh, part of the budget. Uh, but because of the timing, the person who was in that position has now taken a separate position within our organization. So that's triggered why we put it on the resolution. Um, it is, you will see it in your packet, your board uh, budget packet. So just disregard that one. We're not putting it through the budget. That's why we're coming to you now because we do need to feel that we have deliverables uh, that are needed to be accomplished now versus waiting, you know, until December to begin posting and recruiting for that. Is this one particular position or is this uh, multiple positions? No, it's just but one position. So what does the 51 in parentheses mean? Oh, that means our, that's our uh, 51 signifies the health department. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. I just have one question. Sure. Did, does this, um, after we vote on this, would this go to finance? Thank you. For the finance committee. Sorry. Thank you. All right. 
it would show up on your September board meeting agenda rather than waiting until to start on December 1st. Okay, thank you. Wasn't it already authorized by admin and finance? I did not know that, yes. So it's here first, yeah. Okay, okay, we got it first. Okay. Okay. A roll call, please. Bates? Yes. Meshes? Yes. Schofield? Yes. Von Bergen? Yes. Janssen? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Dindrick? Yes. Parrish? Yes. All righty. We have um, budget reviews. Our next. I'm playing the role of Diana today. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a legal. Well, you want to do that? Let's just do it quick. <laughs> uh, I spoke with Diana yesterday. She apologized. She didn't realize she needed to be here today uh, for, for a budget review. Um, and she's got to kind of double booked. However, uh, Carrie's been working with her. It's super simple. Uh, we're really not changing anything. <laughs> um, I guess just um, before I start, because sometimes there's some confusion about the ROE, um, this budget that's being presented is specifically for the general fund operations, and it's outside of the, the centralized accounts or the state funding. So um, I know sometimes I think um, it seems interchangeable. So the majority of that department is funded by state state yes. funding. Correct. Yes. So you know salaries and things like that. A lot of state funded. So the, the larger salaries and, and more of the salary money, money is state. But there are a couple county funded positions in here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So on the FTE list, I have them broken out. So the um, the regional superintendent and the assistant those are state funded, and then. Yeah, so then they have the truancy officers, those are general fund positions, right. and then some of the office staff are the ROE, and then there's one uh, grant funded position, but that's also the general fund. Thank you. I have a question. I thought that she had said um, at some point that that second truancy officer was going to be covered under her budget somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe she kind of converted it into a different position, Kevin Sonatic, and that was a, 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 she was getting grant funding for it. Yeah. Yeah, so if, if you recall, that position uh, was funded through ARPA, uh, and, and that the funding for that ended August of this year, and then yeah, that so was converted to now to you know, to use her own funding uh, that's coming through the state, which is applying for. Um, she ended the second truancy position right, right as school ended in May. She, it's gone? You're saying it ended it? So you why? one truancy officer now. Mm -hmm. So why is it in here? I think it's incorrect. Okay. Say that again. It's incorrect. So I, think, I think we need to change it. I think it's incorrect. <coughs> so that, that's my one question is because um, well, I guess it's, it's still on the roster, it's still so happened. I guess that's my she, mistake. Yeah, she plunked it. It's, yeah, you're, it's, it's right and wrong. I mean, it's still on the roster as a truancy officer. She has converted it to this other state-funded licensure or something position. I don't know what, I don't know what she's going to do. Well, well, right, so I think that one is the one that I had question on because of the fact that the way that when it was approved, it was, there was an end date to it <coughs> um, to reevaluate, so I guess, Keeping that in mind, you know, we need to address. I think all of that is. I don't remember the date on it, but I think it was it like. Was right around. It was. We were to check in now. Right. Uh, and it was to be considered for inclusion in the fiscal 23 budget. Okay. So I think that that's maybe a formality. Either we need to formally include it or formally not. I don't. I. I that. don't like how it's done right. right now because I think we either need to formally vote on it to accept it, or we need to roll it into her state funding, like she said she was going to. Yeah, I think we'll just remove it from the FTE list because the resolution as it was passed, um, it wasn't supposed to come back unless ROE wanted the county to fund it. Right. Okay. So in this case, ROE doesn't, you know, okay. if they, they have identified their funding, so there's no funding that's coming from the state anymore. We're bringing up more money for Mansfield County. Well, so so, so in we're going to remove it from, from these sides. So we, yeah, we get your point. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll remove it from the FTE list. And so, 
And then, so when it says personnel services, then in the general funding, is that including that truancy? Because it appears that it, that's higher in 2023 than it is currently. I'll remove it from there, and then okay. through the budget process, we'll move it, remove it from the roster. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And I'm assuming that's why that's higher. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tanya? I was going to ask this uh, question off of that one. When you said remove the position, does that mean there's no one in the position, or does that mean it's right now, currently, it's within the, the post that she moved it to at the end of the school year? Do we have one truancy officer or two? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> I, my understanding, I'm going to say relatively confidently, is one. Right. So well, when we, so well, didn't we hire? Yes, I met two women, <laughs> and I know Tim is a truancy officer, yeah. but I'm trying to remember which meeting or event mm -hmm. I was at where I met two women mm -hmm. who identified themselves as truancy officers for the ROE. And I was like, oh, okay. There was so, only one. Uh, in addition to Tim, there was only one person that okay. was the truancy officer. Okay. He mentioned that that person um, or that position was it has been vacant at the or was vacant at the end of at the end of the school year. So even before the deadline within the resolution, the deadline was August because the funding was ended. Correct. Right. But uh, she ended it at the end of the school year because right. there was no need to Correct. have a person. During, during the, summer. the summer. So right now there's only there's only one, um, and again, we will com confirm with Diana on this, but there's only one. That other position was converted to, um, I think it's called Director of Educational Services, and she's identified that funding uh, through the state for that position. So we're going to rehire, but we're just categorizing it under the state's um, responsibility, financial responsibility, as opposed to the county. But but the because I, I do remember last year we went through the resolution to approve two truancy positions. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm confused that we, we approved that and then we didn't keep someone on for the summer to start it again in August if our intention was always to roll it into this state funding. Well, the intent wasn't necessarily that. It was just if there was a need. The intent was that if there was a need at that time to show the data that there was a need for it. Um, the county decided to fund it through the American Rescue Plan dollars with the advanced McCarran County dollars. And um, it, with the understanding that if, it, if there was such a need after that period of time that we're gonna come back only only if they were asking for the county to fund it. Okay. When we say we, um, as far as keeping that position and, and, and redoing it or re- um, Hiring. Yeah. Hiring, that's that now because that's all within the NS as a superintendent's uh, control with, you know, with the state funded position that's that's within her authority to do that and so um, that's why that's not coming to the county board and it's not going to show up in the budget either because that there's no appropriation that the county board has to do for that position so she does recommend a second truancy officer we no, don't I, have that at this point it's not no. in the budget and and I, and if she did um it, and and she wanted the county to fund it she would have to come back as that's a right. emergency was appropriation uh, if and if she did and she found funding through the state, then she could do it without, you know, without, without any county right. input. Correct. Do so we know what the? She, I'm sorry. Yeah, you. no. Just a, she is intending to come to the next meeting and introduce her new deputy. Uh, I did ask her to do that uh, okay. next time, but she just couldn't. I think maybe my concern is last year Tim was here and he was very adamant that uh -huh. we needed additional support, and so my concern is. Are, are we starting that, you know, we're starting out the school year without what I was under the impression was really necessary for the, the, the position, mm -hmm. you know, to make it a success. Right. I, but she created another position that's yeah. state funded so that person can assist in the truancy stuff. Well, but it, it's funded by different money. Yes. So, yes. so it's not. And I, I cannot uh, speak for Diana. Obviously, right, yeah. But it's part of the problem is I feel like we're talking to the wrong, I mean, you guys are, are fantastic at your jobs, but this is not their job. I mean, I'm, I am upset. I, I would have rather pushed this to next month because I, I shouldn't be here. We had an end date on it anyways. I yeah. mean, we the created that. The was August. The funding yeah. was August. So we approved it, and right. the ARPA funding was going to run out in August. Right. She just chose to end it a couple well, of months early for the summer. So yeah, and the other question is, what is the raise of $21,000? 
or twenty thousand dollars. No, it is twenty-one thousand. So, person, like, why are there, why are these raises? I mean, that's what we, you can probably have to speak to that. You can't speak to policy of the ROE, perhaps, but you can't speak to why, why, the, why there are raises across the general fund. For all a couple of positions within this department that I think were at the, at the top of the compensation study, so the ten thousand dollar increase. May I ask you something? First of all. Um, I respect the three of you, with your integrity and your abilities, but I don't think that's your role. I think it's poor planning on the ROE's part uh, as far as uh, not attending this meeting, not getting it on her calendar. That is her responsibility to defend this budget that's come forward to us. And secondly, um, I would like, like, uh, for example, I understand she's new, but I'd like to know her, um, like Department of Planning and Development, they have their highlights of what they did for fiscal year uh, 22, so we get a stand, at least if we could have the highlights of her accomplishments of what she's done as she's been newly appointed would also be very helpful in the budgetary process. And um, I think this is uh, an incomplete budget. Uh, I think uh, even if she got, even if she received state funding for another position, she still would need to alter that budget to be reflective of that. Am I correct with that assumption? <coughs> she could be, she could go, I, I want to know. Can she, if she gets additional money for a truancy person, and we have approved of one position here, one person here, can she uh, receive that state funding without, you know where I'm going with this, without altering the budget uh, and informing us of that new funding. It's totally separate, isn't it? Am I, am, am I a question she clear? She has the authority to use the state funding how she... She could arbitrarily go out and hire somebody if she received new funding and we would not need to be informed. Is that correct? I, at least from my standpoint, I, you know, I think that's more of a legal question. I'm not an attorney. Okay, that, well, so. I, I, you can tell I'm a little bit annoyed here. I think it's a transparency of how she does her work in this whole budgetary process that's before us today. And I respect the three of you coming forward to this meeting, but I would like to delay this conversation till next month. I, I, I don't feel comfortable in moving this forward. I would, I would second that. And I'm sure everybody here knows that, you know, our, our our nerves come from a, a pretty pretty big motion last year when we removed the ROE. So what, we're, what everything, the background unfortunately has given us a bad taste in our mouth. So like moving forward, we're like hoping that we're doing everything in the right way and being transparent with each other. But right now, what we see is somebody who didn't show up to the ROE meeting and I don't think it's fair to you know, penalize her for the previous ROE's position, but at the same time, we want to make sure we're setting the precedent right that you know, this is not what we're walking into again. Um, so I, I second that maybe we should hold off on this until uh, Ms. Hartman can can be here in person and maybe answer some of the basic questions and and the and the detailed questions. And can I and I just I, although yes, I mean I agree it would be nice to have both sides of it but in her defense of it and maybe for clarification she does report to the state as well which is I mean that main portion that the state gives her she has to report to a committee at the state level really ours is our purvy is the that hundred and forty two thousand dollars in the general fund I mean correct so really you know that's the part that she has to come and account for to us but that majority of her budget, and I don't know what her budget, but I'm sure it's far more than $143,000, but um, goes to the state. Mm -hmm. So really that 
that she has the right to do with what she wants. It would be nice, though, to kind of keep us in the loop. So, I, 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 again, I'll, I'll apologize for, uh, for not being more clear with, with Diana. We did ask for her goals again earlier this week, and she's just got a lot on her plate right now. I'm not, okay. I'm not, I'm not offending. I'm explaining. I, I'm just saying this is the principle of the thing. Understood. But here's what we can do. We, need, we do need to move the general fund dollars forward uh, because we need to have uh, uh, your next meeting will be September 29th. Yeah. And that day, we will be presenting the budget. Uh, but there is no reason that we couldn't ask Diana uh, to come in and talk through a little bit more about this. Uh, that, that, I, that I, I think that's a very good idea. <coughs> and it's her new time. And <coughs> even though she receives the major part of her budget from the state, it's an issue of transparency. And there's an issue of what she's been doing during her tenure. And I agree with Tanya, and I think that um, there has been some controversy prior to her appointment. Uh, and uh, I would like to see the list of her accomplishments of what she's been doing uh, on, on, uh, in the county. I mean, um, so I, I would support that for September 29th. And, and I think, um, was it, it would have been June? Was, was it June that she was here and shared? Because um, July we didn't meet. So, and, and I, you may have been absent in June. Um, she uh, gave so an we, extensive presentation. She did. She did come, and, and so she has that information. She verbalized it to us. And so I would hope that she would be able to, you know, perhaps have had that in writing when she presented to us in June. So, yes, I would agree that it, it you know, be I was, integrated exactly, I was wondering the same thing when it wasn't. So oh, I appreciate, you. I appreciate you sharing that. And then I would just, um, I, sorry, I lost my board packet. Um, I would, uh, I had had some questions about the drug free mm -hmm. um, coordinator position. And right. so, um, I would want to ask those questions of her Absolutely. Um, September 29th when she, she comes as well. That's a good so question because I think some people have come to me about that position. Mm -hmm. And the grant, the grant is up and, and so, wow. um, so yeah, so I think that sounds like a great um, solution to the situation. So thank you. Appreciate your flexibility on that. Mm -hmm. well, and I appreciate the three of you being here. And three of you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, have a quick question. Yeah. Um, do you have? Do we have to remove that one position then in no. that breakdown? Yeah. Okay, and then um, when she does put together the list of accomplishments or something, um, could we have maybe a little more um, information on the role of the truancy officer assistant kind of position? To I think our main concern is you know making sure that Tim is being supported in the meantime, or if this person is kind of stepping in for Tim's second half is taking over the responsibilities of okay. partially the truancy officer, or if we have to get another truancy officer hired, and if that would even be in our, we yeah, have sort that straight to state. My understanding, again, you know, post-COVID, and, and with Diana on, uh, in her position now, and in her new relationship with Tim, is they're comfortable with a single truancy officer. Oh, okay. Um, but I will have her verify for that. And I'll have her prepared to talk about Okay, thank you. She did talk about it in a meeting, and I actually did think she said that that second person would handle any kind of issues that were, you know, other trans, that would be capable of handling trans Maybe as now well. that school's back in, we can... Um, I mean, she did kind of address that. So, she, like, to your point, she talked about it. Mm -hmm. So, if she could just put it in paper, that would be great. Are we going to... Is this the time to ask questions about why there's a 20, like a 20% 20 raise on the budget from last year? For our only... For salaries. Well, for everything, like it's a twenty percent raise for for overall, it's twenty percent for personal services, practical services, and commodities. Going from the one twenty one to the <coughs> one seventy eight. Oh, the one forty four. Yeah, the one forty four to one seventy eight is is over twenty percent. That's the projected in twenty three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The largest increase on, uh, you'll see across the board, it's going to be personnel. I understand contraction commodities here as well. Um, but that's, you know, that's part of the compensation study that the county board approved uh, this summer. And so, as Carrie was mentioning, there are some employees that were maxed out, so it couldn't, so nothing could be done uh, in 2022. 
but then um, this is being budgeted for 2023. Um, so a large part of it is that, um, and then a contractual commodities, uh, we're gonna drill down a little bit more and be prepared for that conversation on the 29th. That wage study that you all voted yes for in yes. the last meeting. Would it be safe to say? Would it be safe to say that the 21 personnel with the 129 went up to the 150 because we hired a truancy officer? So right now, the secondary the truancy. The one that needs to be removed is like a 3, 3, 4. I'm so sorry. Can you say that? So it's it's not a full time position. So there's merit in there. There's two years of merit. 21 to 23, and then the effective become steady. And then the 150 will come down a little because I'll pull out the truancy. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I appreciate this, but I think she also needs to be here to defend those, uh, the rationale as well. And uh, I think the three of you have your time. Yeah. All right, well, I think we've decided um, that we're going to hear more uh, from the ROE uh, September 29th. So if we want to, sounds, I'm hearing that maybe it's a good time to transition to the VAC. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <coughs> So um, as Mike joins us, I'll just, um, Tanya asked a question, and so Peter, if we could just um, acknowledge, so we have PHCS the morning of the, scheduled for the morning of September 29th at 8.30, right. then the budget meeting for all of us is scheduled at 10. Um, and so there was some email, and I just realized, I don't, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden today I've gotten a bunch of emails that didn't show up in my iPad when I looked earlier this week. So I may have missed something, but I did see that we were going to continue to keep PHCS on the schedule for 8.30 to 10. We have a 90-minute hard stop. Yes, we have a 90-minute hard stop. So I just wanted to acknowledge to the committee that, yes, that is the intention, that we will still have PHCS, and then we will be done, and we'll be we'll, sure to we'll, have... We'll, we'll, we'll prioritize, you know, working with Diana and her budget. I don't know what else will be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, since we're on the subject of the 29th, you had asked about the presentation of the I plan. Yes. And um, that's a tight window. Yes. Um, yeah, so, but Melissa and I talked yesterday about that. Um, the public presentation of, of the health department's I plan, at least in its draft format, is going to be at MCC on the 30th. Correct. Um, 20th. When? 30th. The 30th. 30th. Okay. Um, we, if it's if it's your pleasure. The health department staff is prepared to present the I plan to the full county board on October the 8th oh. at the county. Okay. So 8, 8, 15. 8, 8. Yeah. It doesn't matter. probably the 15th. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I just, I was so Does impressed. That work? Does that work for you? Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that we all had a chance to hear it because um, I know that we've talked mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, this committee, uh, these uh, all of the members here have expressed individual or uh, collective <coughs> request to hear more from the health department on things other than COVID. Mm -hmm. And I, I was very impressed with the presentation and, and, and um, thought the information was something that we all needed to, to hear and, and understand. So I'm just glad that it's being scheduled to be presented um, in a number of different ways. So we'll just uh, continue to inform the committee as to when those presentations will be happening. Sure. Um, okay. All right. Mike, do you want to share some highlights of your budget or your goals and highlights over the past year? You know, that was one thing I missed on the Oh. The big thing since the law was passed, my big focus has been trying to get everything ready for January 1. Okay. Because it requires us to have uh, our own policies and just everything in writing. And that's taking a considerable amount of time. Uh, the, the biggest thing on this is, you know, like many other VACs impacted by this law, we're taking the same approach we are. Is you know, before we can move forward, we have to have talent in place. So that's the biggest thing we're focused on right now is getting the right people in the right position 
so we can move this forward properly, deliberately, and focused, as opposed to, wahoo, <laughs> let's go on a spending spree. So that is the main goal. Right now, the things we look at under the um, Article 6 of the Public Aid Code that we can do is under the financial assistance line items. I, uh, you'll see in there that uh, one of them is for burial services that is identified in there for people who uh, basically their bodies have been abandoned or whatever. The VA has funding for that, but only after 180 days. And the coroner is not able to access those funds. We may be able to. I have talked with other VACs who've successfully done that. And I talked with the coroner on how many unclaimed veterans he would get in a single year, and that's how we came up with that figure. And that's why that figure is in there. Then you also have the county figure, which mandates the $900 to keep a veteran out of a pauper's grave. You know, that's a separate fund. Um, more re yeah, the, the big, I think the big thing on this is we're trying to keep this in line not going crazy. Uh, I actually reached out to Representative Ness about a provision in the public aid code which offers to reimburse agencies that are successful at prosecuting claims at the Board of Appeals level, which we are very good at. And if they're able to reimburse, that would be another source of money coming in. It would also give the state skin in the game. So, yeah, so I, I don't know if there's any questions you have specifically. I think the, the biggest thing that we have as far as last year is in the top 10 counties, uh, as far as largest percentage increase in compensation dollars going to veterans in their county, we were the largest county. We were the only one that was above 4,000 veterans in that top 10. So, and we were ranked third in the state in that. We also, at a good note, ranked third in the state as far as retention of veterans in the county. There was a loss overall. We had a loss too, but it wasn't dramatic. So people are staying here, and obviously I would say the reason is because of the property tax exemption. And I think that the number of veterans we lost over last year was uh, probably higher than the number you're seeing because of the number of people who moved into our county. And they're bringing their families, their money, their skills into McHenry County from that perspective. It's a good point as far as the dollars that were brought in. The cash, direct cash payments was over 63 million. And the VA had invested about 128 million in McHenry County for veterans in 2021. So that was some figures they just released not too long ago. So that would probably be our biggest highlight. If you want to yeah, I want to, for your purposes as, as county board members, maybe you want to draw your attention to page, packet page 20. That's where, really, that's where the rubber hits the road. You know, Mike is autonomous. He doesn't report to the county board. He doesn't report to the county administrator. He reports to the VAC. Historically, the role that the county board has had is in establishing the levy uh, to fund the operations of the VAC. Uh, this legislation has further separated uh, your oversight uh, from the VAC with a little more autonomy of uh, the VAC on the levy. Right now, we're, we're suggesting a, a levy increase from 425 to 550. And very respectfully thankful of the VAC <laughs> for, for approaching this uh, in, in, a, in a modest manner. Um, they've got new responsibilities. They're shifting staff to a, to a state-driven pay plan, not the county's pay plan, as has been, as has been the historic position. Um, so we're still going to do payroll for the VAC. We're still going to use our financial software that doesn't have to be that way. They can go off on their own. Uh, but we're, we're still going to have that that relationship and we're appreciative of that. We, 
We do need to strike a new memorandum of understanding uh, in the coming months with the BAC, kind of documenting uh, what the relationship is going to look like relative to payroll and insurance and budget software and the like. Uh, right, we're going to keep it as tight as we can. Right, Mike? Yep. All right. So, hey, we still bottom, want to play bottom line is this new legislation at this point looks like it's going to cost us 125000 on the levy. Pretty satisfied with that. What we're gonna we're gonna walk through this together. Uh, Carrie, Kevin, and I are gonna be with Mike uh, as we move into 23 and, and see how things are going. Uh, but I think this is a, a modest conservative start. Okay, thank you. Thank Questions? You. I just we're already seeing some problems associated with the federal public uh, PACT Act as well, so that's gonna be affecting our office for years. I just wanted to attach uh, to what. Pete had said, and thank you for working with um, administration on it. And I know it's kind of, you know, been all over the place, and the potential is is a great impact on the county. So we really appreciate your being conservative and working together and being transparent about that. I mean, we were just talking about that, um, you know, and this is an example of how we can do it. And so thank you for working together and and uh, keeping a very conscious. Um, mind of of the impact that it does have on others as well you know while providing uh, obviously exemplary services to the veterans so thank you I'll pass it on to the Commission as well um, um, the question regarding administrative service excuse me administrative specialist two on the full on that to Eve it says one, but then in 2022 it says zero, but then there's two listed as admin coordinator and office clerk. And so I was assuming that we're splitting up that role into two, sub, into two positions. Thanks for asking that question. Uh, what we're looking at is the person we have in administrative specialist two right now is actually doing the duties more in line with what the state describes as a office coordinator. She's in charge of writing reports, creating reports. We have the new software. She's trained in creating those reports for us. So a lot of her duties have expanded what uh, we consider in, according to the district. Yeah. Yeah. And then a clerk, that's, I, I guess the closest equivalent is just that, just an office clerk. I think the separation on that is they can be expected to drive somewhere, which is something we needed. Yeah. So it was because of, yeah, not just the act in the state of Illinois, but the PAC Act. We need more, we need talent in there, and we're going to be having staff doing different things to address that because the PAC Act is going to be affecting veterans, yeah. Vietnam forward, just about all of them. Specifically, uh, 1962 to 1975, 1977 to 1980, and 1994. They specifically identified those groups as being directly impacted by some of the 40,000 foot stuff you're hearing in the news about the PACT Act itself. And then there's other provisions that draw everybody else in with, regarding how they're going to approach environmental health issues. Right. For everyone, you know, the PACT Act is the, the, the new legislation on anyone around open burning. So. Well, that's the focus they have. It's burn pits, it's Agent Orange, it's uh, the nuclear cleanup out in the Pacific. It, there's a lot of things. So it's a much more broad definition of, of who is potentially impacted. Okay. So it says, I just wanted to make sure I understand, Administrative Specialist 2 is being removed and essentially being uh, recategorized into administrative coordinator. And that is why our last page within the packet lists the current classification as admin specialist two, and it says proposed office coordinator, but I think it means, I think you meant administrative coordinator. And that's why we see the increase of the pay from the 17 to the $22, essentially. Well, that was nice to put that in. Yeah, that's okay. correct. Perfect. <laughs> so. and, I just tried to make, and then the last question I had was um, regarding contractual services. Is that is that large increase from the sixty-three thousand to the one ninety-one? Is that because we um, 
uh, approved the software that needed to be? No, the software came with a five-year contract, so <coughs> that's covered for the next for five years after that got installed. Is that? That is because of some of the article, uh, the public aid article nine, social service responsibilities we have. That's agreements to try to address those. So, like, uh, for instance, I have a uh, community meeting with Veterans Path to Hope and with Lovell Federal Health Care Center this afternoon. And that's going to become a regular thing as we work together to address the services that the law wants us to address. So the contractual services, so the 130000 about increase from the 21 budget to the 22 budget and the projection even thereafter has to do with support teams that are coming into the VAC office and then sort of helping you manage the future of some of these like regulations and new laws and rules and things that are coming in. I was thinking contractual like software you know contracts and things of that nature. So I'm just trying to understand the 63,000 and 21 to the projected of 307,000. 4,000 one line item. They don't see that. Oh, she's seen it all rolled up. Oh, that's, that's what she's looking at. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here. I'm looking at a detail. Oh, okay. Yes. So, um, to answer your questions, that is primarily uh, because of the added responsibilities, added costs to do that, and expansion of some programs. Because one of the things they also added to the law is they expanded, used to have to be honorably discharged veterans, they've expanded that to those with a general under honorable discharge. And the honorable was uh, adopted because of a, a second circuit decision on what the definition was meant by the state as honorable. So that is that was probably a, court, a clarification of what legislature wanted as opposed to what the court said it. Okay. I appreciate so your contractual service is almost like the programs that we're offering are, are expanding. Yes. Okay. Perfect. That's yeah. perfect. We again, as I said, we're going to have to learn as we move through twenty three what Mike really needs. But when we went through this, the, the first budget was was over a million, <laughs> and, and we, went, <laughs> we went through every line, and, and we kind of by fifteen thousand dollars. We kind of we kind of challenged what do we really need there. And we're gonna we're gonna walk with Mike through this process, and, and um, if we'll have a better idea what we really need for fiscal 24. But this is kind of like on a smaller scale what we've talked about with our response to criminal justice with, with safety. We just don't know. Uh, we're gonna have to see what we really need there. We don't want to undershoot it, but we want to overshoot it. Either. We got a fund balance, uh, and, and if, if, if the general fund is Mike's backstop, if, if it needs to be there. But I think we've got enough money for him to accomplish what he needs to. In the, in the budget meeting that we have, do they tell us kind of more detailed of what those, like I'm, I'm absolutely all supportive of any additional programs that we're gonna put in, but when we say contractual, I guess I was maybe a little misunderstood on how, what that line item means. Do we talk about it more in the budget meeting? No. No, okay. Yeah. Well we then can, thanks we for just describing line, it now. This is, <laughs> but that contractual line is, a, it's a series of expenses all rolled up into one. But we don't. We just don't get the nitty gritty. Yeah, but if you um, on, on our website, um, we have the uh, Quastica dashboard um, that you can drill down in some of that, and I can send you the link for that. Okay. So I'll do that, and then you can drill down up to that main account levels. So. And you're more than welcome to come down to the office and, and we'll walk you through it. Thank you so much. Sorry, there's a lot of questions. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Good work. Good work. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. And I echo Carolyn's comments about uh, appreciating your uh, conservative outlook on this. So thank you for that work. You have a good day. You too. You too. Thanks for being here. Chair sure, Carr. Yes. Just an update on the um, Community Development Housing Grant Commission, Robert Grammer. Yes. So he was on the board, and his term did expire uh, on the 12-15-21. However, his position itself was replaced last month uh, by Nicole Lamorte. She she took over his term, so now he's reapplied. So he has currently been on the board, but it just last month 
his application before he didn't apply in time to reapply for his position. So Nicole Lamorte took his position, uh -huh, right? uh -huh. and now yes, um, he is taking um, Cecilia's, Cecilia. who did apply, but she withdrew her application after applying. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Marty. Yep. Well, Thank you. That was uh, digging in, digging in stuff. And well, and I'm responding with faith and planning and development. Right. And now I'm, rem I'm remembering yes. something about that somebody missed the death. That's what I said. So, that so, right. okay. Now it's ringing a bell that name. Okay. And I received a phone call. You refreshed my memory. Okay. And um, some of some individuals were not informed and kept in a loop about their term ending. Mm. So then they missed the deadline. And it was just not him, but it was also a reappointment of an individual from the Housing Authority to the Senior Services Grant Commission. So there's been some kind of hiccups, there's been hiccups in the communication. So we don't okay. inform people when their terms are up. There's so many commissions and so many terms. When they are appointed, they do receive a letter and a certificate saying when their term is up. Mm -hmm. I understand, but um, it fell through the grant. I mean, it, he's not the only one, I'm mm -hmm. saying. Okay. All and right. I think we need to be cognizant of it because this is, they volunteer their time mm -hmm. and they have a lot of um, competing demands in their lives. Maybe All right. The well, chair, like the chairs, keep track of chairs. I see. Right. right. People. So may, mm -hmm. not waiting on perhaps Kathy, but, but putting it on Mike. Something to think about. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for solving that mystery for us. Yes. And Faith, that was the Faith Taylor and Pee Indies. So All right, Faith. Woohoo! <laughs> I just got yeah. All right. in front of me. <laughs> okay. So how about um, <clears throat> do we need a bio break? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't need one, but why don't we take why don't we take a five minute bio break? It's okay. ten fifteen, so ten twenty. Um, we'll come back and um, start with C D. Thank you. All right.
All right, we'll come back together and rejoin. Are we, uh, are we good to go virtually? All righty, thank you so much. Okay, moving on to budget reviews. We've got the CDBG and SSGC. Hans, it's so great to see you. Great to see you all as well. Um, good morning, everyone. For the record, my name is Hans Mock, Community Development Administrator for McHenry County. Um, and welcome to our budget review for fiscal year 23. Um, so as a point of reference, we had increased our staff level as of 12, 1 of 21 to 6.4 FTEs. Our proposed budget reduces staffing to 6.0 FTEs, which is a 20% reduction in our request for county general funds. Mm -hmm. Our duties are split among staff members as a total team approach with uh, staff uh, for the COC, the Senior Services Grant Commission, and our lead program with a specific focus in the case. Um, so our um, budget also anticipates an increase in the Home um, Investment Partnerships Program, which is our affordable housing development program, and flat CDBG funding. Um, that's where the uh, budget is looking to go federally. They have not approved their budget on time in very many years. I can't even think of the last time. Uh, longer term projects will continue um, into the following year. So things like our ERA program, our LED program, et cetera, they carry forward. And of course, uh, one of the things on the agenda a little bit later is identifying new appropriate new opportunities that fit within the realm of community development and serving our residents. All right, so revenue sources for next year total $9.1 million. Um, you can see the breakdown there. Um, primarily, uh, our funding is federal outside of the Senior Services Grant Program. That program includes the grants to the agencies, um, so that amount that listed there is primarily comprised of uh, grants that are made to nonprofit and municipal organizations in McHenry County to serve our senior residents. All right, and just to go over some of these descriptions, the CDBG, or Community Development Block Grant Program, is our um, signature program with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. And so when we're budgeting our funds, we base it on the date of the federal fiscal year that we now follow. So those funds come in at 10, 1 of 23. Um, CDBG program income is in our budget, and that's from when housing units that have been provided with owner-occupied rehab sell, and those proceeds are returned to the county. So that has to be in our budget in order to accept those funds. If we exceed that amount, we have to come to the county board for an appropriation. Um, home program, again, the same thing, 10, 1 of 23. Um, our COC planning is our grant to help the continuum of care and homelessness support uh, efforts to end homelessness in McHenry County. Uh, that's part of our unified funding agency, which you'll see a little bit later in the slides. Also starts on 10 1 of 23 with a standardized date that's um, going to be um, consistent with our other grant programs. All right, HMIS, that's the Homeless Management Information System, so we are the lead agency for that as well. Uh, we have a contractual agreement to uh, an individual who helps to manage that program and work with the CMC agencies to ensure their data um, is provided. Um, that will begin again at 10 23 that popular date. And a portion is the salary um, and, and remaining and training and software costs. So we have to pay for an annual software package. Um, lead leftovers, that sounds like a really terrible meal. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, what this is, is just a portion carried over to pay our fabulous Lead Safe Homes Program Manager who's over here, and he'll be um, here for the next uh, presentation we do. And then um, project delivery costs. Um, we have a $29,000 allocation from the commission for use toward the Lead program as matched, uh, which is required with that program. And this is for uh, the direct services to the clients to assist them. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the Unified Funding Agency, that is um, our administrative dollars to manage the entire COC financially. Um, so all the grants to agencies that come through the COC, that's the funding um, to, to review their audits and whatnot. All right, and that's President Gerald Ford signing the Community Development Act of 1974. <laughs> but um, if you have any questions, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Hans. Any questions? I have a question. Um, <clears throat> the sustainability of new funding and how it carries over for the next fiscal year <coughs> that's been um, designated by the federal government. Long term, 
how do you think it will impact your department? I'm sure you've already been asked that question. But. Yeah, we, we have definitely been looking at this and have talked about um, with our grant commission about the reauthorizations of both CDBG and home. So the program um, funded in 1974 mm -hmm. um, had much fewer grantees at the time and much mm -hmm. more funding than it does currently. And so in order to right set that, what they would need to do is a reauthorization of the entire program to set a de minimis level of funding nationally with all the additional grantees they've gotten that have hit 50,000 for uh, an urban city or 200,000 for an urban county that have been added in over time like we were in 95. Um, they have to account for that that way. That would be the only way that they would appropriate enough funding moving forward. So those, both programs are up for potential review that would increase the funding by like triple. Um, currently with the home program, we just learned yesterday that they're proposing some initial administrative changes to the program. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, the tenant-based rental assistance portion of the home program um, is up for administrative review because it hasn't been updated since the 90s. So they're, they're wanting HUD to you know, make those changes administratively to the program first and they're gonna work toward the financial end of things, increase the funding level on an annual basis. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Hans. I, I really appreciate, appreciate the work that you do. Oh, no, Tanya, yes. And, and I, I don't mean to no, jump no. ahead, because maybe we're supposed to talk about this after, but when we talk, when we look at the, your revenues, does that have anything, are the revenues ever considering, or um, uh, I don't know if, they, if, if there's like a projection on that that has to do with that I, IHDA um, grant that we're applying for later? Because um, I know it says, you know, minimum 300 or maximum 950. So I don't know if you can speak to that, oh, or sure. maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, no, no, I can actually answer that. So <laughs> we did not budget for that, so we would do an emergency appropriation through the county board if approved for the grant in order to, <coughs> to have the chairman sign the contract. We would have to do that at that time. Thank you. All right. Okay, well, thank you so much, <coughs> and I appreciate you um, explaining all of this because I know as, um, Chair of the CDHG Commission, it's, there's a lot. And so we are so lucky to have you kind of follow that bouncing ball, if you will. And I don't mean that I'm not making light of what you do or what we are able to do with the county. It's, there's just so much. And I really appreciate your attention to detail, how you remember all of the laws and acts and, and requirements. And um, so uh, thank you for your detailed um, highlights and, and goals. Uh, the budget and so um, I'm glad to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. He's got um, a soothing voice always to present in it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So then moving on for budget reviews, we have uh, public health. Yep, and I'm just going to quick, sorry this did not make it into your packet, that was my oversight, but it is reflected in the supplemental request. So the actual budget numbers are in there. We just um, inadvertently forgot to include or didn't notice that it wasn't in there. Okay. Um, this is Thank related you. to the supplemental piece. Thank you. Thank you. And so we'll get that updated before it moves on. So we, we too will try to keep this brief. Um, so we don't have any, um, I'm not gonna you know, necessarily go over everything that's in the packet if you have questions about it, but we have no change to our FTEs this year. Um, we already addressed the one position that is moving through the resolution process. <coughs> Just a couple of highlights. There's um, many more were included in your packet, but we did complete our I plan and the organizational assessment. This is something that we have to do every five years as part of certification. We've been doing a lot more trainings with our staff. You know, we have that as a priority. Um, we also, uh, thanks to you all, were able to make a modification to how we classify our environmental health practitioners based on their training status and their years of experience. We have also, um, and I encourage everybody uh, who's interested to go on the website, we have improved our access to online public records, specifically um, in our environmental health 
Uh, so a lot of people um, get a lot of FOIA requests, so we're trying to put more and more documents out there that people can go and search for those, um, and hopefully they find them. Um, and we are going to continue that process. Uh, we have also done a lot of work with the opioid surveillance and response, including working with the Substance Abuse Coalition and sharing uh, a committee. And we have increased uh, rabies vaccinations, registrations, and drive through clinics, which proved to be very, uh, I think, well received during the pandemic, and we intend to continue doing those. Um, for next year, we're going to focus on strategic planning and communications planning. We are looking at a point of sale system so that we can improve the efficiency at our counters where we're doing transactions. We're also <coughs> looking for, uh, we do have a lab downstairs in environmental health and we are looking to make that lab certified. And we will be doing more STD outreach and education. MAP, the MAP groups, MAP stands for Mobilizing for Action Through Planning and Partnerships. That is a piece of our implementation piece of our <coughs> community health improvement plan. So those are folks from the community that come together and develop the strategies in order to address the health priorities. Uh, we also recently um, purchased something called Tableau. It will, um, it helps us analyze our data and can also do visualization so we can put more data visualizations front facing for people to see. Um, and we're going to continue, we've already started this work with municipalities, but there's been a lot of conversation in how we can both in animal <coughs> control and in environmental health reduce some of the duplication of efforts, particularly with overnight response calls to complaints, like barking, for example. Um, in terms of our revenue, I just summarized um, the 2023. So it is similar to Previous years, we have had obviously a couple of years that stand out as unusual given all the additional COVID money that came in. Uh, of our budget, uh, our total budget, the levy supports roughly 24%. And, and that's similar to previous years too. Um, and that is actually down though, uh, it was more closer to 30% in 21 and projected for uh, this year in 22, at least in terms of our budget. Our revenues are actually up slightly when you compare it to our budgeted numbers uh, versus our revised budget. So there has been dollars um, that have come in additional grants, specifically some ongoing uh, funding for COVID. And we are, the miscellaneous income, because it's not specified, is uh, some contractual dollars that we get for um, in the nursing division, our Illinois Breast and Cervical Cancer Program matching funds, as well as miscellaneous costs for radon kits, printing fees, etc. We likely are going to see some additional grant dollars come in, but we haven't budgeted those because they're not they're not promised to us. Okay, and then um, our expenses are essentially flat. I think they're actually a about 1.26% increase from the prior uh, year. And as you can see, you know, the majority of our expenses are our personnel. That is our biggest uh, expense, and that is also <coughs> consistent year over year in terms of what our personnel costs, uh, the, the percentage-wise of our personnel costs compared to the rest of our budget. So our supplemental requests, we are looking to make a couple of personnel changes. One is most of our management staff that are overseeing programs and grants are completely funded on the general fund. So we do have one position that is split between uh, grants and the general fund, and we would like to move that entirely to the general fund for continuity so that those they, they oversee many multiple programs, um, and that way, we're not at risk of not having that supervision or having to make other changes um, uh, for the oversight of those programs, which includes chronic disease, a lot of our chronic disease programs. What I passed out to you uh, 
before we started was we're looking to reclass two of our kennel positions in animal control and make them animal control officers. The reason we want to do this is we think it's going to give us increased flexibility to, for staffing purposes. Animal control officers can both do the on-call in the field activities, they can also support kennel operations so that they're cross-trained to do both that gives us more flexibility in how we utilize our staff. On the contractual side, uh, we want to earmark some money. Specifically, there's been a lot of conversation at the Board of Health around employee appreciation and recognition. So there are dollars uh, in there for that purpose. We also have had increased costs in our digital subscriptions related to uh, polling software that we can use both internally and externally. Uh, something called Archive Social that helps us uh, through records retention, keep track of all of our social media posts. And we also want to increase our training budget so that we can execute on our strategic planning and workforce development. And then there are some costs in there that we have not traditionally covered, although they're allowable uh, through the county budget policy like cell phone reimbursement. Um, and then computer software for dental records that we are required uh, to keep, but we are going to look to see if we have other ways of moving those records off of the database that we're paying for now to post those records and see if we can move them onto something internal for the long-term storage because we are re required to keep those. Um, and then in commodities, just some um, uh, equipment for out getting vehicles and some miscellaneous <coughs> office supplies that are currently not budgeted for, uh, and some food costs to do some training. So when we have trainings and we, you know, not, I'm not talking about the one hour training, I'm talking about longer trainings where we can, um, where we might have to do over the lunch hour so that we can keep operations going, not have to close for the whole day, include costs there so we can purchase food for those required staff meetings. And then uh, the capital request is one that we sent last year to. It's to replace a decommissioned vehicle in animal control. Uh, our special funds for those um, uh, who are not aware, we have two special funds. They're uh, small amounts of money. They were earmarked for uh, these purposes we do with the animal shelter get some donations. So those are for unusual expenses or any medical <coughs> expenses that go beyond the um, our own budget. And then the health scholarship is really around utilizing dollars for internal costs for training staff. So that's um, that's department 51. And then we also have our TV budget, which is in your packet. That also is um, fairly consistent uh, to the prior years. Most of those costs are related to the personnel costs to run the TV program. In our contractual services, those costs include private lab costs, uh, part of our electronic medical record and medical services. And then the 5,000 is the commodities is primarily medication for, uh, to treat the TV. Melissa, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Um, you uh, mentioned that uh, there was a personnel change that you were doing with uh, respect to someone who was partially funded by grants and, and you were going to have them from the general, 100% uh, from the general fund? That's what we're asking to do right now. They're covered 50-50. Part on a grant, part, but as grants, year over year, the grants can cover less and less. They stay, the grants stay flat year over year, and so they cover less and less of the personnel costs. So because it's a supervisory position, and we want to be consistent across the other supervisory positions and be able to know that that position doesn't have to change or reduce FTEs so that the other program staff have that continuity of supervision. I, I and that's in our supplemental request. Yeah, I understand that part of it, but I was thinking that wouldn't, uh, like if that person was funded by grant funding and the general fund, wouldn't that give them more incentive to uh, be successful on obtaining grants? Or is that person responsible for applying for grants? Um, 
they're not necessarily responsible for applying for the grants, but they are responsible for overseeing the grant dollars that fund the programs that they um, support. And please keep in mind that we are always looking at grants, right? And we try to uh, offset costs continuously with our personnel costs. So even though somebody is on the general fund, off the, officially, right? right? We will offset that if the work that they are doing is on a grant. And so those costs are constantly shifting back and forth. All right, thank you. I, on that position too, I had a, um, a question from the standpoint of, you know, typically with grants, you're allotted a certain percentage for personnel costs, correct? Yeah, I think it depends on, um, but typically personnel costs, it depends on the grant. Uh, when it is covered, right, we do put personnel costs on there. You will put it into that position? or Well, that particular position, again, um, and Susan, do you recall off the top of your head right now um, how much of the new grant is going to cover the personnel? And one of the issues, too, that we've had to approach this is you know, the continuity is another one, thing, but because of And that's what I'm, I was kind of wondering, is it just to cover that overage that, you know, maybe that grant couldn't cover, or is it to then utilize that 20% elsewhere, or, you know, I just don't want it to like double the personnel cost for a grant. You know what I mean? Like if you're allotted a 20% on that grant and then we're covering another one on general fund, I don't want it to like now be excessive personnel cost. Like, is that going to be taken No, I think, like, to Susan's point, so with, we had to really look this time at all of our grants uh, specifically because with the increase in the comp study, that puts increasing pressure on those grants that are covering those personnel. So we have to change sometimes the amount that can be covered on those grants and shift it back over to the general fund if that position is a general funded position. Yeah, okay. Because I just didn't want it to add more possibly towards those grant personnel costs because I'd rather you know not have it I get it if it's that one in our study uh, I mean in theory offer. like if our grants never change and our personnel costs go up right. year over year over year at some point they cannot sustain any personnel costs right right, right. and that's what I want to just make sure on that and then um, the, so how are we handling supplementals this year and I don't know if that's a question for you guys or for you guys um, we'll make a recommendation um, part of our discussion on the 29th of September. Okay. Because um, yeah, I... Because we, we just <coughs> we have to get to that point in terms of what, what available revenues there are. So, and I... So mine with, are more with the supplementals on yours, my questions, because, um, you know, while I think it's great to do, like, employee appreciation and um, those the benefits towards, and I appreciate you for wanting to appreciate your employees, I think, that we need to, but I also want to see if there's some form of consistency because the, the one thing I don't want to do too because I think we kind of got ourselves into it and then it kind of spiraled you know when you do it with one and then another department kind of hears about it and then you know they want the same kind of benefits so I think we need to understand you know what that would be and what the other departments are maybe doing or if they're investing um, just so because we may be getting down a rabbit hole where you know if we approve one supplemental then all these other departments are coming back and you know, maybe fourteen thousand dollars becomes you know a hundred thousand dollars. So I just want to. That would be, I guess, a discussion. I think is worthy of having. I made a mental note of that as well. Okay. For Thank the same you. reasons. Okay. Thanks. Um, one of the items in your highlights said that we have resumed um, some division programs that we had to put on hold due to the pandemic. Programs. So specifically, you know, we had to certainly cut back a little because it was all hands on deck for um, uh, COVID. So in some cases, you know, we just had to uh, pull back a little bit. I think, Susan, do you want to speak to that one too? Because in nursing specifically, we had to have all those staff reassigned through incident command to address the emergency response. So we cut back. We still saw the essential people that do that consistency and keep the babies up to date. But we just cut back and went down and went to a fully led program. Understood. 
So, so we went back to capacity to handle yes. those, those programs. Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we now give some of the law enforcement agencies some of those uh, scanners for the animals, right? Oh, yeah, the animals control. Yes. Not quite yet. Okay. Well, we're so I was wondering if that was in this project. I was wondering if that, that was in projection or if we had already appropriated that or? Well, you know, we had talked about the potential of coming into some of the with ARPA. But also, um, it's a pretty it's it's a low enough cost that I actually could absorb it in my budget right now. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. When when we have those rolled out, is there any savings we would project for you know employment so that you know the employees aren't going out there and doing the same, um, or are we going to kind of wait to see how that works in the first year rollout? Yeah, I think we're going to have to see how it works. I'm going to be meeting with the chiefs in September. So we'll be talking September 20th to talk about that a little bit more and some of the duplication of services that we were talking about earlier. And, you know, it's every municipality is getting a scanner, but it's one scanner. So we have to talk about how are they going to utilize that to the best ability to scan an animal in the field or back at the at, the, at their site or, at, you know, we have to talk about that a little bit more so they feel confident they can get it done. So we wouldn't even, I mean, we're not going to consider any, uh, I guess, cost uh, decrease because we still have to go through the training and we still have to sort of I think part see what that's able, going to be able to address that a little bit more as we see how it goes out. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I'm hopeful that it reduces a little bit of overtime. Yeah. yeah. Oh, overtime. Okay, yeah, thank it, you. It's definitely it's the time. call outs in the evenings and the weekends, you know, that maybe we can avoid uh, with the scanners. There you go. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one. Okay. So um, I'm wondering um, maybe it's the 29th that we're going to talk about um, any remaining ARPA funds for in the county bucket, if you will? I mean, how is how is remaining ARPA funds, particularly, I mean, six, eight months ago, we loosely earmarked, if you will, 7.5 for the health department. And to my recollection, I don't believe we've done anything with that yet. And so where does that all fall into the budget conversations and what we're gonna do on the 29th, and then what we'll have to do come October? Uh, good questions. Um, we have spent some of it, uh, right, right. not a great deal, yeah. uh, but we have spent several hundred thousand of that 7.5 million on the health department. Okay. Um, the health department uh, leadership has kind of developed, uh, uh, you know, coming out of their assessment, and, and you know, they've kind of developed what they would like to see as, as utilization of a portion of that 7.5 million. We got a first draft of that. Kevin, Kerry, and I are going to be discussing that a little bit more next week and we'll get back with Melissa. Melissa's going to digest that. We're going to then probably then go to the Board of Health uh, and, and review it. But it, in terms of how it's going to fit into the, in the budget discussion, it's, it's not okay. a great deal. Okay. We, we, it, largely because you know, we're, we're trying to avoid ongoing expenses right. with those dollars. Right. We're trying to use more one-time expenses. Right. Um, so it, there's there may be some things that might have otherwise been in the budget that will be addressed, but that's more of an indirect relationship with the budget than, than a direct relationship. So I'm not thinking that we're going to have all that tied up necessarily by the 29th. Oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure I understand. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Department of Health? All right. Thank you, Melissa, and Department of Health staff. Appreciate you all being here. All right, and um, I want to continue with the agenda. I know that um, Regional Office of Education has been able to join us. Um, we did spend some time on the Regional Office of Education already, so I would like to continue on with the um, current agenda uh, and then circle back around to the ROE. So if um, Hans, you're here to discuss the IHDA HRAP, what, just what we need is some more acronyms <laughs> under the CDHG. <laughs> it's like alphabet yeah. soup, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yes. So I would like yes. to go ahead and, oh, What's I'm that? sorry. I'd like to go. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. when, yeah. Yep, 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 when we're, when we're done. Thanks. Um, sorry, I'd like to just first introduce our Let's Save Homes program manager. His name is Tony Peshti. And if that name sounds familiar to, to you, 
Um, his grandmother, Virginia, served on the county board and the CDHG commission. So um, he's a great part, a great addition to our team. Um, and I'm bringing him here today because he's part of this uh, proposed idea. So we're coming to the commission with a request um, to apply for funding from the Illinois Housing Development Authority for their housing rehab program. Our intention would be to target it toward the senior population to ensure they can stay in their homes. Um, as we indicated in our kind of summary for it, um, more than 80% of our housing stock is uh, homeowner occupied, um, and that's the target of this uh, program. So we can apply for up to, I think it was $900,000 in funding. Um, up to, uh, I believe, 21,500 can be used in one individual home for a roof replacement. Uh, there's a three-year lien on it, which is a very light lien. Um, this is very much like the Community Development Block Grant Program and what we've operated through the Housing Authority. So we're actually collaborating with the Housing Authority on how to reimagine this as a whole package uh, between the funding that's been allocated to them through CDBG um, and through um, this proposed project and potential um, additional funds that might come from the community. Um, so we're really excited about this opportunity. This fits well within the community development realm. Um, home owner occupied rehab projects are very common in CDBG throughout the, the United States. Um, very common project operated by CD provisions. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that we've learned about this so far. Um, but we've got a very tight turnaround time, so we're happy to have gotten this <coughs> on the agenda, but uh, we have about a week to submit the application. Oh, boy. I okay. hate when that happens with grants. But it's usually what happens. All right, any questions? Carolyn? Specific to seniors, you said? Um, that would be the, the preference. That we would have a preference in the application process for senior. Um, just because you know, the housing repair, we commonly see them as applicants for CDBG anyhow, and they're presumed benefit under CDBG. Um, but with our aging um, population in the county, that would be the target. Um, we'll be open to all the county residents. Okay. I, no, I, I think and appreciate that the senior would um, be the priority. I really like it, so I would absolutely support it. Do we have a number that you're interested in applying for? Um, we would probably. Because we're a Collar County, um, Ida tends to focus on the Collar County areas just because there's so much population. It was portion, you know, sort of explaining the obvious, but there's so much of the population of the state is up in this area. Um, we would probably apply on the higher end, okay. like 750 to 900,000. Okay. Do we have a projection and, you know, can all those funds be used? Do we have like a, a you know, uh, a need right at this moment that's kind of more immediate and then, you know, in the, up to March 2025, what we would know for sure we could, um, you know, use those funds. Yeah, with us averaging um, between the administrative costs, which is 5%, or actually, yeah, it's 5%. Um, between those costs, um, we would probably get done. I can do the math in my head that quick. <laughs> um, 35 units, 30, 35 units. For that, uh, the 21,000? But when you when you expand that out between the project delivery costs and, and the actual cost of the construction for the itself. Okay. So it covers more than Exactly, because I know that just came up in the last questions and things. Yeah, so there are administrative costs that are allowed so that there's there's funds available to cover the cost of the staff. Do you Thank think you. we would add staff or would we just uh, supplement? No, nope. uh, we would work that within our existing team. I thought it was standing right there. We just don't know right here. <laughs> Tony, <laughs> and would this have to come um, to CD to CDHG at all, or for the for this, it would be very similar to the LED program. So the oh. applicants apply directly to the neighborly portal, um, and then we do an income tabulation and everything, and ensure that they're eligible for assistance. It's up to eighty percent of area median income, just like CDBG. So it mirrors it like heavily. It looks just like CDBG. And so you need nods? Yeah. Yes. This is just, yes. <laughs> this is the perfect process when it works. It doesn't always work this way, but it's a new grant. We'd like to request permission to apply. He gets it, he'll bring it back, he'll bring it back to accept it. All right. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm supporting it. Thank you. Get out of here and go Thumbs apply. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We've got to wait here a while. Good luck with that. Um, I have a free schedule tomorrow, so I guess we'll be working on it. All right, Absolutely. may the force be with you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks. 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 All right.
All right, and I see uh, no other specific items on the agenda. We'll circle back around. Um, uh, Regional Office of Education is here to um, perhaps um, shed some light on the budget um, conversation. And I do know um, that uh, at least one of our members needs to leave at the top of the hour, so we'll um, provide an opportunity to answer questions before we adjourn uh, the meeting. So, Diana, thanks for um, coming today. Good morning. Good morning. Performing. So if you could speak to um, your budget a bit, uh, many of the uh, committee members had questions, so um, if there's uh, just uh, some summary that you'd like to provide and then we can open it up to um, some of those questions. Sure, I think um, a couple months ago, Kevin and I spoke and at that time I was here for about four or five months and we determined since it hasn't been a full year that will um, carry over the budget from the previous year and then assess based on a full year uh, in office of what needs to change in the future. And one, thing, yeah, one thing that got brought up was the carryover um, ended up carrying that truancy officer, so just to clarify that, it'll be down to one truancy officer. Let me explain okay. on the truancy. So the state has given the ROEs more funding to address truancy in your county. Um, so the ROEs can develop programs or um, hire certain individuals. So in a model that's been uh, working over in Lee County, Ogle County, ROE, they're using an outreach worker um, and more truancy. So what I'm doing essentially is not asking the county to carry over from their general fund to um, pay for the second truancy officer that the ARPA funds runs out in about November, that we're gonna pick that up in the state funding. Uh, and so that's why it's not part of the county budget. And then with those funds that the state is supplying to the ROE as well, one of the models that seems to be successful that we're going to try is have an outreach worker. So it's just not the gotcha person coming to the house and that it's this person, if the parents are willing to work with the outreach worker and set up perhaps incentives for their child to attend school or things like that, if it's a parenting issue or if it's just a child issue that that person can help coordinate um, community um, resources if the student needs clothes or other items to be successful in, in school that that person is there to do that as well and also be a conduit to all of those other community resources that maybe that family doesn't know about whether it be counseling or housing or whatever it is so that's what the outreach worker is going to do that outreach worker therefore is funded through the state of Illinois into our ROE ISC dollars and then an ROE employee not a county I have a question. Um, you're new, and we appointed you, and now you're running for re-election, but uh, at the time there was a certain level of controversy surrounding that position that you filled. And to me, I, I would have liked to see in your budget a list of accomplishments that have occurred since your tenure. And I believe that part is missing. And I think a good template is what the community development um, people have done. So my question for you, what are your accomplishments? And what do you think um, you've done that you're very proud and uh, moving forward, but in the future, that's my feedback to you, that uh, it helps the reviewer to take a look at what has been done and then in consideration for the budget request. Oh, I agree with you. Thank you for the question. Um, I uh, did not, I received the notice like on Monday of this week and with the schedule that I had, I did not have time to put together um, everything for this meeting. So I suggested that to take all the 2020 
to two um, snapshots that I've given to Mr. Austin and put that together from what has been done in the past since that's already been supplied. And then we can talk about what the goals are for the future. But I, I agree, I would love to be able to do that. I just needed some extra time. So verbally, what, what do you think are your accomplishments? I believe, first of all, coming in and uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's one area we haven't touched, but I think um, first figuring out the finances of the office and what needs to be done moving forward. I think that's a, first a huge accomplishment. Um, also, uh, looking at the documents and organizing as much as possible, working with the county offsite storage, working with the state of Illinois. The documents haven't been touched since the 80s. And therefore, there's multiple documents that need to be added to the uh, list of, of keep, store forever, store for seven years, store for two years, those types of things. So we're working on that as well. Um, then it was also recovering all of the grants that were not submitted for, that were very easily able to submit for. Um, to recover those from even FY21, somewhere from 21 and somewhere from 22, and recover those as much as possible. Um, I believe another uh, area is our safe school, um, and our safe school needed oversight and needed uh, new and fresh ideas and to make that program more successful and also bring in a CTE component. It's actually a state requirement to have a CTE component in, component in that program and since before COVID that had not started up back again. So I have, um, we have a new principal there as well. We are making a partnership with MCC, so all of our students that are 16 and older. Uh, we have a transportation issue right now, but we're working through those difficulties. So all of the students that are 16 years and older, they can enroll in either automotive, um, child, early childhood, fire science or culinary out at MCC and that the, the grant dollars uh, pay for them to do that. We do have a transportation issue, but we're working through those, those hiccups. Um, so that's a component going in. Also bringing in a innovative online curriculum to our students. We never know what students we're gonna get out at the Evergreen Academy. Um, and sometimes, unlike the I would say back in the old days when I started over 20 years ago and I was a safe schools teacher, um, you would get a lot of students that didn't have strong academic skills. We can have students all over the board. And for those students that have high level skills, that, that they have um, effective education for them as well and to offer multiple opportunities. So last year there was only three teachers there. When we're accepting students sixth through 12th grade, that's a lot of differentiation in the classroom and therefore not the best scenario. When you have three teachers, they can't, they can't teach five different classes in the same period. So therefore, this online curriculum that I have funded already is, um, has the ability so that student can do credit recovery, they can do electives, they can do high level courses for credit if, if they're that type of academic student. So that's a success as well. Um, we, uh, as of today, we have a brand new assistant superintendent. His name is Chris Zelensky, he's here with me. And he comes uh, from uh, U46 down in Elgin. He has seven years of experience um, as consulting to administrators, school, the, all the schools in the district. Um, he's a board certified psychologist. He is a school psychologist. He is a BCBA, um, strong background in education, was at Huntley before that. And uh, he is overseeing our health life safety, our occupancy, a permitting process and we are we are going to follow all the rules and regulations that there are we're uncovering that um, there was multiple areas of concern and um, we're going to be you know like I, when I started we're going to be a pinnacle for ROEs in the state um, we're modeling after DuPage and King County they're doing great things and we're bringing that here Along with recovering some of those grants, there was other opportunities that were um, the ROE was either unaware or not taking advantage of. For example, there's a social emotional uh, learning hub within the ROEs and we were uh, not involved before. What that brings is $70,000 annually to McHenry County Schools in the area of social emotional learning. So that could be PD for our staffs, for our social workers, for our teachers. It could be for them to stay in the profession. As you know, there is a flight out of education due to multiple reasons. 
and it could be addressing those issues as well. The ROE ISC dollars were, used, were being sent over to Boone and Winnebago ROE incorrectly. Those are funds, A, to help fund your office, build programs, um, and offer professional development within the county. Another thing I did on day one when I got here was to start offering professional development in our county. So we are working um, out of workforce uh, room to offer those administrator academies. Um, we have, uh, we just started putting on the calendar some technology administrator academies and workshops. Um, so professional development is another area that we're working on. Um, also getting, getting staff in our schools out to innovative learning opportunities, whether that be conferences or workshops, um, I'm working on that as well. Uh, I probably haven't touched upon all of them, but for the sake of time, those are some of the, those are some of the so things we're doing. I heard that also you made appointments to the ROE along with the chair. So how was that process occurred? I understand there was a problem with getting a form. To oh, the board. Of the, the board. board. So how, 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 I mean, I knew nothing about it. So how did that process work? So how did you recruit and how did you make that appointment? So um, that's a great question as well that I've been um, answering for, for the last week or two. I think it's been coming up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's all under statute. So the, the ROE board only has one responsibility. They're not a governing board. Um, they are a board that is there in case there's annexations or, or boundary issues with school districts. And we meet, or they would meet um, quarterly if there is a application there has been no applications, and if there are no applications, we only meet in July. So at the March meeting, by statute, the board chair appoints any open positions, or obviously, people could have ran for them in the past as well. So if nobody has ran for them, or if they've been deserted for various reasons, then that board chair appoints. It's their sole responsibility to do that. So by March, uh, I came in at the end of January, like about January 24th. So by our March meeting, uh, there were enough appointments that uh, Karen Turio did approve and appointed them at our March meeting. And where did those appointments come from? Did, were they uh, advertised through social media or were they from a friend of a friend? How did they? How did they come forward to for consideration? Sure, Karen had uh, a few people that she reached out to, and I had some people I reached out to, and they put in contact with Karen, and that's how we found them. I, since since we're on that subject, you did have a question. It, it would appear that a couple of the terms expired in twenty three. That is right. true. So there. Would that be a, a spring election if someone had wanted to? Yes. I believe in 23. I believe so. We'd have to talk to Joe mm -hmm. to see exactly when they would. I heard a spring when the other um, municipal, yes. other elections. I think that's the case. And so theoretically, if somebody wanted to run for this, board, they, they could pass the Absolutely. Shortly. I'm concerned, and I'll be very frank with you, about the transparency of how these people were recruited because I knew of a person that was interested and was not, and they contacted whoever and never got back to them. So I'm concerned about transparency uh, of, of this process occurring in the community. I, I have no idea, I mean, the diversity and who they represent, from what part of, of the county, so that there's a voice, you know. Um, so I'm concerned about the process and how I heard, and uh, I knew nothing about it, and I think some of my, uh, I can't speak on behalf of my other colleagues, but I know that Ms. Terrio had the authority to make the appointments, but I still, and back to, and you're, you're the head honcho here. You're, you're in this role, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm really 
really concerned about the transparency in the process so that we are all with the same understanding of the announcements going to um, the website, to uh, the outreach, so that there's a playing field for people to apply. And then, they, and if they're appointed, they can make a conscious decision of what they want to do uh, in the future if they need, if they want to run for that seat. Sure. Um, to that point, uh, when we our mar our meetings are public, open meetings, right? No public showed up for the March meeting. No public showed up for the July meeting either. I don't know of the um, individuals that you're speaking of. Um, whatever is precedent, you know, I'm happy to follow. Uh, if if obviously the ROE is a state agency from ISBE, and if you want to show somewhere that there's openings on the board, that's that's fine as well. Um, and I work with the state's attorney's office to make sure we did it correctly. And I think, if you, as you mentioned, um, I appreciate your comments and, and I concur. I think um, the other thing, what I've encountered in my four years on the board is just the um, uh, misunderstanding or lack of understanding of what that board does. Exactly. And you, you've mentioned it today and I appreciate that. and. I think in terms of your expressing, you know, there may be interest out there, um, and I would want to ensure and support the Regional Office of Education that potential candidates who would be running or even appointed understand what the role is. Because a lot of people I talked with, I think, inferred it was a governing board. Exactly. And, and it's not. And, and that was even a surprise to me as I learned and was educated about it so I think that you know there's a misunderstanding I would say for those who are even aware that no offense but for those that are even aware that there's an ROE and then the second layer of knowing that there's even a board uh, I, I would I would suspect that um, very few in the county know what that board's role is so I would encourage you know as you know I don't I don't know what the requirements yeah, are to notify and inform we but do, certainly we do. And we, we'd be happy to do some social media on that, yeah. on that but we got to lower expectations. Sure. These people aren't going to be. I, know, I, I understand right. that. It's, but a, it's about struggling. solving border disputes between 155 and 200. Right. That's and how often does that, yeah, right. how often does it happen? So. And we're yeah. trying to turn a new leaf, so to speak. Yep. yep. And try to do things differently. And there has been a criticism of that office prior to your tenure of lack of transparency and administrative um, issues and um, it's, it's time to move forward. Yep. And I just want to speak to one other uh, point to that. In, uh, you mentioned about diversity and you know make sure, making sure. So in statute, each board member is from a different township. Yeah, and I just want to actually, I really appreciate that board being filled right now because it seems to be cyc cyclical because I, I remember one time it was filled when there was growth and then everyone got so bored because there was never a meeting so they all quit. And I think I voted, I voted one time, it, you know, I've been here 20, I can remember in 20 some years voting one time for somebody that actually was on the ballot for that position. So um, I'm glad it's filled. I, you know, I'm glad it's filled because maybe it will get some understanding and recognition as to what it does, but I also hope it doesn't get filled with the same people that are expecting a lively committee and right. realizing right. there's not enough <laughs> work. Right. So, um, right. you know. Exactly. But, yeah. That was one of the selling points to get people to actually be part of the yeah, yeah, that much, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I know there's grumblings down in Illinois um, at the Capitol that uh, they might get rid of this board. Um, I'm not sure who all the players are for and against and, and what if these boundary issues came up, who by statute would now be responsible for deciding those? I don't know. I believe the ROE superintendents group is behind that. I, I haven't listened to more than that of it, but there are grumblings of changing it because most ROEs have a problem keeping it filled because there is an activity and they're like, well, it's, you know, there's nothing for me to do or it's a waste of time or you get a couple couple ROEs that have all the hot issues and it's too much for them. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. 
Well, good luck. Thanks. Um, I have a couple of questions. Well, first of all, thank you, because you gave us a lot of information all at once, and I'm trying to take notes and remember the questions that I might have um, to probably wrap up maybe the concerns that Dr. Jensen has just about the board. Um, I just wanted to reiterate again, or excuse me, uh, uh, clarify. You said next year in March is when the uh, mm -hmm. board can uh, so people can apply again. I'm not exactly sure no, when they would have to put their name in yeah. for running. Well, so. Probably like November. Kathy, uh, December. Me, look, December this question did come up this week, so I'm learning fast on what, what this. We, I believe there's seven positions on that board? Six. Six, okay. okay. And they, there's okay. there's staggered terms, mm -hmm. two expiring in 23, I know two are like 26, I don't know. But, but I know my, the light bulb went off for the 23, so that's likely a spring election that they'll be on the ballot if, if somebody pulls a petition and, mm -hmm. and gets on the ballot, in which that's they right. can probably do pretty soon. Okay. And if they're in the so right, I, if they're in the right district, because right. like you right said, you have to, or the right district. district. Yeah, township, it's, yeah, I think it's by district, because there's 13 right. townships, so. It's by township. Yeah, but I think it's like, it's not every township. In order to one. use a ballot. Correct, correct. Right. Correct. right, so correct. it's, correct. yeah. So they are like district numbers. But when I was but looking at the statute and working with the state's attorney's office, we had to make sure that each of the yeah. ones that they were appointed were from a different township. Right. I think okay. it's called like a region. Maybe it's like a region. I think it's, it's a called. regional. Yeah. I think it's called region whatever though of it. But anyway, right. so they may not, not everybody will have somebody then on right. the ballot this time. Got it. So if there's no, if there, if no one goes, um, to apply to be on the ballot, then we just kind of keep everything status quo and there is no open on no, the would be open. It would, it would be, if no one applied, it would be two vacancies in the spring of 23, and again, the, likely the chair would be forced to appoint somebody. Well, to address the, the elephant in the, the room, <laughs> well, the chair is in Karen Turner. She was board. elected. So I think that's Maybe. She was elected, though. She, yeah, She's elected. The chair is elected. She oh, yeah. She's the one person that voted. Oh, she was the yeah. person that was she elected was, yeah. already, and then she appointed the board, which is where this confusion right. on where the application that process is. is. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I think she's the only one I ever, I, I can know, remember I like two people maybe running at the, Thank you. Okay, that absolutely answers the question. Yeah, that was I, recent. Yeah. Okay, that was so recent. perfect. So um, if I can jump to some of the other items you mentioned. So you said grant recoveries, and you it sounded like you were really on top of that. Do you know how much was able to be recovered from the 2020 and then on? I believe at the last meeting I had some preliminary numbers, and I don't believe when I came to present the last time it was on the that little sheet that I just did on Sunday morning. <laughs> um, I believe at the last meeting I had some of those numbers, but off of the top of my head, um, for example, the $70,000 in the social emotional learning hub, um, both years for digital equity, which was 21 and 22, you know, there's some in, in there. Uh, there was another, I can't remember the, it, it's not crazy amounts, but everything adds up and it all helps. So I bet it's under 100,000, but over 50. Well, obviously with the 70, that's gonna be, so, so yeah. over a little over 100 maybe, okay. that 70 included. Okay, and then, um, you had mentioned that there's some transportation issues, and I, you said that was with the CTE. Is that Correct. the is that the transportation issues that we discussed at transportation regarding the MCC rides? I thought of the same thing. Tonight. Well, we and, and I think there's, there's a potential yes. that is the same issue. But I we reached out to them, but they're they obviously we have I think those classes every Friday. So they said we could set it up only if it's three days a week. And we'd have to do the call for the one day a week. And so that's the problem. But technically, I'm trying to have the school districts do it because technically they're responsible for the student to get to Evergreen. Why can't they drop them off over at MCC? And then we could find some type of transportation to pick off because these kids might be coming from different districts, right? Instead of coming to Evergreen, they'd be taken to MCC. And because we might have six kids out there from all different districts, then they would come back, because that would be a morning class that we would do. Then they would come back to Evergreen, and then they would be picked up at the end of the day by their districts that they typically go home with. So the one, the two problems I, would, I was uh, trying to um, resolve were some districts don't have the capacity with lack of bus drivers and lack of you know, buses to be driven 
to get those kids out to MCC and then doubly I couldn't hire anybody to pick them all up from MCC and bring them back to me. So that's when we were trying to reach out, well, let's try, you know, the McRide. And then there was the components of that handcuffs us into that doesn't work either type of thing. Okay, so uh, what are they doing now? <laughs> so we're still trying to get the transportation resolved right now. Okay. Right. So, so right I'm now, hoping like by, um, and by the time we signed up, be kids, I think a lot of those classes were kind of already full from the, you know, from the end of last year. So I'm hoping in January we can get a more robust program going. Okay, because it is it on semester. Every semester. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking the same thing. We, we have two hundred thousand dollars we're looking to spend on public transportation, so I can put Scott Hanks in touch with Diana. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And um, just. Uh, Independence Health and Therapy has multiple buses and they're right down the street. Right. Oh. And I know that they've been um, conducting or participating in um, MOUs okay. with other agencies and providing um, transportation. And uh, and so I, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna promise anything, okay. but John Buckley is the Executive Director at Independence Health and Therapy mm -hmm. and perhaps mm -hmm. that might be uh, a solution utilizing the funds that Peter just mentioned. So. Okay, thank you. Um, I just had two more questions. Um, one is that SEL Learning um, Hub uh, grant, and you mentioned it was for staff and social worker and teachers. Is that only something that is, is more for the staff as opposed to like students using that grant? Uh, I'm just getting involved now, and I believe every other week we have a meeting. So there's a couple there's a couple of things with that grant. So one of the ROEs is um, the administrator and holding all the money and, and de we do all the work through them through the, for the state of Illinois. They give it to Kane or DuPage and then we all work in area one with Kane or DuPage to do it. So I think anything under that umbrella, you know, can be a fit. So it can be partial students, but a lot of that's gonna be staff and professional development. They do have a component where you're supposed to go in and kind of do an audit with the school. Schools are overwhelmed and thinking of like this audit, you know, that's that's a component that the state wants that is difficult to get off the ground. It's easy to provide workshops, it's easy to provide professional development. Um, but other than that, uh, it's not a grant where it's money, because um, we did have some of those that I could use. It's not going to be extra salary dollars to promote, you know, it's hard to find social workers right now in schools and probably most larger districts are short yeah. and it's not going to be a grant to provide any salary support. Okay, but not necessarily for the students as of right at this moment because you're still kind of researching how right. those monies right. can go. Okay, um, the uh, other question that I know we all talked okay. about which was the um, truancy officer. Yes. And so we do need a second truancy officer, correct? Right. Okay, and then when you mentioned that, so we have one and I know it's on this budget, well, technically there's two on the budget, but if we move, would we move one of the truancy investigators to the state funded position once that's approved? Or would it be this outreach worker under the state and is there a difference between the uh, wages? So we would, as we, the ROE would fund the outreach worker and the second truancy officer and not move any of that to the county. So right now, our, our fiscal year started July 1. The state of Illinois has not funded anything as of yet. Um, I did, we had three positions that we were going to, we put into that grant from the state. One was an executive director. That person would be over the safe school. That person would be over um, truancy, work on professional development and things like that. Um, so Chris Nolinsky was actually hired for August 1 uh, for that role and then he's now moving into assistant superintendent will be paid by the state. Therefore, I really have three positions that that is in that grant and approved. So one is a second truancy officer, one is the, uh, the outreach worker, and one is the executive um, director person. So the state hasn't started paying, he's moving out of that role, so I'm not going to fund, or I'm not going to hire that truancy officer or replace him until the state starts paying because I'm borrowing from my PD fund in order to pay those salaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when does that 
going to happen. I have called the first. I have called the state. They cannot give me a projection yet. So, are the in that role right now, or in, in that need for that, are, are we short right now? I mean, are we having a lot of, uh, I know school just started, so maybe we're not worrying about truancy quite yet, but is it something that we're, you're feeling like heat on yet? Or how much time do we have before we need to be pushed? <laughs> I was assuming by September, the state might be paying it. I asked other ROEs and things like that. So I was hoping by you know September, sometime in September, I'm gonna see those ROE IC dollars hit for us and then know to go to Illinois funds and transfer them over and hire and go. So we already have the outreach worker, right? Oh, you already have the outreach worker? Yes, so the outreach but worker is working with Tim, okay. Dempsey, our truancy officer. So I am I'm kind of right in that balance now um, where I didn't want to have to bring them in and put them on the county and then transfer them over to the ROE for a new person. I just think there's a lot of um, headaches with that and and problematic situations with that. Okay. So I was right in that balance to see, you know, like you said, the first 12 weeks of school, we can probably handle it with Tim, okay. and he's going to say, yes, I can take the extra help anytime. <laughs> right, right. But try to see how September goes and if we get that funding from the state by September. And if not, then I'm gonna start, you know, planning a different way. So it's not one of those things where we can take from the, gen we're borrowing from the general fund, moving it over and moving it back. No. Um, so we just have on hold right now for that. Um, my absolute last question was regarding the um, intergovernmental, the intergovernmental general fund, and it says that we appropriated the 132, but we haven't received any. Does, is that something that's paid at a, like the end of the year, or? Oh no, your fiscal year just started. So Correct. does that actually mean that the reason we don't have anything in the fiscal year 2022? Wait, no, that would be 23. Sir, where, where are you looking? The, so what, on, what funds are you talking at, about? On the oh, drug free uh, community grant. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so it says 18. our revenue, no, 18. right, our, <laughs> our, our revenue um, is supposed to be um, the 132 and then in, 23 is projected at 142, but it says fiscal year 22, eight months is nothing. So I didn't know if there was a payout that goes with that revenue, and that's why we don't see monies in that yet. So um, the year today, in 2022, right now it's, a, it's, it's it, this is a grant and it's coming from the state. So um, we're basically at the mercy of when they send the funds. So it could be a one-time transaction that just shows up you know, over the next few, uh, four months, but we gotta keep in mind that they're- the Fiscal year is so different than ours, okay. That, so uh, yeah, I have no concerns that we're not gonna get the money. It's okay, when. <laughs> perfect, right. that's it. Thank you so much, thank you, Kevin. And so on that question regarding the Drug-Free Communities Grant, that grant is concluding, correct? That's my understanding, yes, in 23, I believe. So it in turn like January twenty three or July twenty three. I'm gonna have to uh, find out like exactly the date because that we're thinking you know is it is it the state fiscal year end or is it ours or you know so I'll I'll have to confirm so we actually I actually have that written down I okay. have written that down September so we can so okay September thirty oh September twenty okay of uh, so not in a month. But no, no, it's a not year. This year. It's a, okay, so it's in the 23. And so I, it's September 30th, 23. Right, and the okay. conversation that I've had since I got here with all, with Kevin and with Laura, is that that grant's not going to, that opportunity won't be there any longer. So whether a That's different right. type of grant um, is developed through the health department or something like, we've had these conversations as well. So my feeling is if, if that role or that person isn't going into schools, I don't see that role staying in the Regional Office of Education. It may, if they're doing community partnerships, I mm -hmm. see that being in a different area and with county as, as opposed to the ROE. Mm -hmm. and so we have a year, it sounds like we have a year right. mm -hmm. to identify what's next Correct. for, for that and work that's the being done. And at the Mental Health Board, there has been discussion for the future. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. I mean, okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. So then we've got a year to 
plan. Uh, to plan for what's next. Because we should be committed to right. the mission yeah. of, of, of that um, task. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any other questions, Peter? You look like you're ready to Kathy say something. Kathy tracked down Diana's bullet points that she presented last month. Uh, we'll flip those around into highlights for the budget document. I'd appreciate it, yeah. and I think Great. it would be I just, very I just helpful. Send everybody so you Great, thank you. It'd be very thank helpful you. to the other county board members as we go through the review process, and I appreciate you coming in last minute Absolutely. to speak with us today. Yes, I was at a meeting in Crystal Lake, so it's another thing, building a partnership, we're building a pro pilot program. Um, we're gonna start with uh, Huntley and Harvard, and instead of the traditional internship model, um, we're going to create influencers within our high schools mm -hmm. that uh, know about, hopefully at some point, all the business opportunities in our county to have our students maybe work, stay, play, mm -hmm. and live in McHenry County and fill those uh, positions that are so hard to fill. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, old business, future topics, Any uh, no old business, I don't think, any future topics or future uh, meetings? I have a question. Are we still meeting earlier before the budget meeting says she came in? Well, that's, yeah, we'll see w what else might need to be well, on I the agenda. Well, I think we kind of addressed the one item that I knew we were going to put on the agenda. We'll yeah. see whatever else okay. develops. Right. I, I so, don't have a, so that may be there's a likely to be a resolution or two, but if, right. if it's not, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. discuss whether or not we yeah, because that's the regular right. months. Right. So even though it's a September meeting, that would be our meeting for right. October. Before so the right for yeah. So uh, and then yes, it's it's the morning of the budget meeting where we're all coming together. So okay, no executive session. Uh, anybody want to stay or should motion we motion to adjourn? adjourn? Okay, Carolyn motions. So second. Dr. Jensen seconds. All in favor. Hi. Hi. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. Appreciate all the questions and input and feedback.